been it's a been pod- a lot of it's years. Been po- it's been a few years since it's been a podcast, and yet yeah. I too find myself. It's not good wanting to say live. We shouldn't. We shouldn't <laughs> be doing that. Anymore. <laughs> ah, hello, mm-hmm. welcome to the podcast, everybody. How you doing? Hope you hey. hope you're hope you're good. I'm hope fine. You I'm fine. Thanks show. for asking, everybody. Uh, anyway, hello. We got a lot to talk about today. We yes. got a lot of things going on. Um, a lot of things that affect you. Yeah, maybe. possibly. Uh, I made the main topic. Uh, we use stuff. Yes, everybody's Apparently, favorite system. They might be dead. Yes. You just might be dead because mm-hmm. you neglected it, and it's yeah. your fault. <laughs> uh, also, the shop's dying. The the we the Wii yes, U well, and the we've 3DS known that, shops. We've known that for a while, but it's happening like this week. Isn't yes, it? and we've talked yeah. about like how devastating it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this week we learned that it could potentially be very devastating for one particular franchise, uh, Nintendo's uh, Ivory Tower. They're yes, one Wait, of their golden geese. I've brought this up many times, mm-hmm. but we'll bring it up again yeah. because why not? Uh, special thanks to Kazer de boop for the two months. That's his name. Yep. And Dark Type for the hundred bits. Hey, Wolf Bros. Happy Pie Day. Hope you are eating some pie. Nope. Nope. Whether it's pizza pie or apple pie or cherry pie or chicken pot pie. I like a good chicken pot pie. Yeah. Costco's chicken pot pie. Uh. Anyways, sorry I haven't been here to see these lives, but I hope to see more in the future. Well, thanks, Dark Type. Oh, I could have used Warren's cherry pie for my tweet promoting the song but i didn't uh, you're an idiot i am you're i'm dumb. very bad at this and i understand if you want to <laughs> replace me with somebody there is a burger place in farmingdale here on long island yes. that has a uh, pie written out just on the front of the store yes, i know exactly what you're talking and about and it looks like it's the name of the store it's yes. just it's just uh, like should, 30 digits I of pie. I don't know what that store is. It's like the only burger place in well, the no. middle of farming. Well, there's Burgerology. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Because like the digits of pie yeah, are supposed yeah. to be like, we're smart. Yeah. Because we're, we're doing burger science. <laughs> I've eaten there. It's very I don't weird. Remember, I don't remember the pie being part of that is restaurant. Is it any I it good? Was, yeah. It's, okay. good. it's expensive though. It's okay. very expensive. That's fine. So... Is Bob crying? Yes. Uh, I'm sad I, about the. Weed. I really, I get really emotional when it's pie day. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anyway. Uh. All right. Let's. Oh let's, yeah, you're right. It is. That is burgerology. You think I'm? You think I'm fucking around? Yes. Okay. <laughs> What else do we have to talk about today? Mario movie stuff. Mario um, movie stuff. More in the ongoing, never-ending saga of Microsoft trying to acquire Activision Blizzard. You know we love seeing the Microsoft yes. and Activision uh, we have, drama. We have news on uh, the Suicide Squad game. Uh, we have we have a recap of the Capcom showcase that was last week. I know uh, nothing about that. Yeah. Uh, f- news on Stadia. Could it still be alive? Spoiler alert. Fuck no. No, it's definitely and then, not. And <laughs> then uh, Starfield gets a release date. Uh, which will not happen. Okay. I'm not. That's not well, the date. I feel like it better. <laughs> Whatever the date is, give it another couple weeks. Okay. Uh, anyway, Thor Vindwarf. Thanks for the 13 months. Hi, Wolf Bros. Hello. Hey. Charlie, thanks for the prime. And Murr, thanks for the two months. Thank you so much, everybody. Guys, let's talk about how your Wii U is dead. That's right. This made me want to break out the Wii U. I don't have it here. Oh, so mom and dad. So mom and okay. dad. Because why would I fucking have this in my house? <laughs> Thinking of dusting off your Wii U real quick before the eShop goes down forever so you can nab a digital copy of Wii U Party while you still can? Well, hopefully your Wii U is still of sound health. Wii U owners on forums and Reddit ha- are finding that their systems aren't quite working anymore. With errors, many owners suspect are linked to leaving them sitting unused for a long period of time. The issue seems to have come to light based on an account of NeoGAF Forums member uh, Serzia, whose whose friend booted up a Wii U system after lo- after a long while and got error code one six zero dash zero one zero three on the gamepad screen, which points to an issue with the onboard memory. Some Twitter users are also reporting the issue and a similar error, um, 160-2155, 
was also reported by Reddit user Critical Hit Misses, uh, who can't get to download management apps on their Wii U. Uh, the Verge has reached out to Nintendo for comment on the Wii U failures, but so far it was not. Res- it has not responded. Uh, Nintendo discontinued the Wii U in 2017 and no longer offers repairs for it. Ooh. This isn't the only Wii U issue bubbling up at the moment either. The company is currently dealing with a network outage due to vulnerability while playing Mario Kart 8 the original version, and Splatoon Online. Uh, The services, as of this writing, have been down for five days. There has been at least one person who wants to figure out uh, the Wii U bricking solution, a console modder who goes by the name of Voltaire. They run a YouTube channel doing mods and are offering to buy broken Wii U systems to figure out how to solve um, error message uh, 160-0103. Uh, The Wii U issue seems to have been in the wild since at least 2017. That's when a thread attempting to find a fix for the issue, which seemed small at the time, started on the GBA temp forum. Uh, Some users note that they have never modded their failing Wii U systems, but it seems some hacking is required to back up the NAND and hopefully find a way to flash it back. One user attempted to reformat the console that was showing symptoms of corruption, but ended up bricking it. uh, Oh, God. Yeah. I vaguely remember hearing about this and seeing that people were able to fix it by reflashing the memory, but it looks like if you format it, you break your system. So it might be a lot more involved. Than yeah, I that sounds like it's that a it lot was. more involved. Than... That really sucks. Yeah. I mean, this is something you don't think about. You just think, you know, you have a system, uh, even if you don't leave it on for, you don't turn it on for a very long time, it should still boot up and work. I had to boot up the PlayStation 3 last week. Oh, no. Because it got a firmware update. However yeah, it many did. years it after. Did. Yeah. So don't worry. It's all it's all set up. But, like, I turned it on. It connected to the PlayStation Network. It downloaded the firmware. <laughs> and it runs fine. I It took me forever to find my digital library because that, that storefront is a disaster on the PlayStation 3. Yes. And it's a disaster on the PlayStation 4. Well, so it was even, digital storefronts were brand new at the time. Yeah. So, but at least it works and I can access stuff. This is a, a much newer system than the PlayStation 3. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm checking right now to see of, of the possible solutions that I might have found. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you encounter the unicode, your options are limited for a fix. This is according to Nintendo Everything. Since the platform was retired years ago, Nintendo moved on from repairing Wii U units. The only possibility some sites are mentioning involves a NAND memory backup, which is what you said yeah. before um sometimes with these types of reports they can come a bit overblown it's unclear just how many how widespread the issue is uh looking at that guy's twit tweeter tw- tweeter thread yeah it looked like there was a, a handful of people that had the issue yeah so, yeah i'd imagine like is... if you haven't played your wii u in a while and you plug it in this yeah could, it looks this like this is i mean in order for like people to be reporting on it it must be a much more widespread issue than it was back in 2017 when it was first found mm-hmm. I just found so Reddit was down all day. I don't know if you know. Oh that. no! Uh, but I just found a Reddit thread uh, from eight years ago. <laughs> Solution error one six zero dash zero one zero three. That's the one, right? Uh, yes. Uh, error one six zero zero one zero three. That's it. Is the combined result of user error and poor software design. How could it be user error? Occasionally, while attempting to write over existing save data, the data will become corrupted, causing an error whenever one attempts to boot the software. This error has existed from day one, but has been more prevalent among users of Super Smash Bros. for the Wii. For the Wii U, I mean. Mm. Uh, I encountered this error this morning and have discovered an easy solution. This solution works if the error was caused by Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. I can't guarantee that it will fix other games affected by the error, but it might. It will depend on whether the game utilizes shared save data. Immediately after recovering the error, uh, receiving the error, restart the console and create a new user from the user menu. Do not format your console or it will brick. That's what that yeah. that confirms what happened to other people. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, once signed in as the new user, boot Super Smash Brothers to the main menu just past the title screen, then cancel back to the title screen and close the software. Sign out and sign back into the original account from the original from your original account. 
start settings, data management, navigate to wherever your data for Super Smash Bros. is stored, you should see at least three options. Shared data, say a data associated with your primary account and data associated with a new account. Delete the data associated with the primary account. Oh my God. Navigate back to the menu and start Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. It should now work with all save data intact. How does deleting your save data save your save data? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Feel free to delete the new account now or keep it around. Unless, okay, weird. Can you back up your save data on the Wii U? Like to a thumb drive or I'm something? I'm sure you can in some way. Yeah. So I'm assuming this error message happens when you boot up a game? Because they're making it look like it's caused by Smash Brothers. Uh, no. Uh, well, according to this, to the Verge article... Uh, whose friend booted up a Wii U system after a long while and got error code 160-0103 on the gamepad screen. So it looks like they got it when the system just booted up. That's not good. That means that this fix will not work because yeah. this is if the a game, a specific game causes mm -hmm. it. Because uh, it sounds like if it just happens when you boot up the console, you're not even going to be able to get into the yeah. settings. Um, that's terrible. But but then again, how are you able to format it? If you could do, if you can, if you can buy, it, you know, I'm sure it has like a, you know, when you usually get an error message on a computer, and you just hit okay. Yeah, just... <laughs> it might be worth it to do what this guy said. Yeah, take a take a screenshot of what I just had on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, this right here. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> that. Take a picture Oopsies. of that. Take a screenshot of that. Oopsie daisies. That's not what time it is. Take a screenshot of this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, try it on your Wii U, I guess. Uh, also, I wanted to bring up another thing that's killing Wii U's. Uh, the stupid thumbsticks. So, uh, this happened to Metal Jesus Rocks. It's on his uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, the stupid thumbsticks uh, just corrode. Really? And they get all jelly. Oh. I've seen this happen before. Uh, it's happened to something we have. I don't know exactly. <coughs> was what. it the GameCube controller? Because I remember that. Like, oh yeah, it's up. It it freaking gets all like. It it feels like it's got like freaking Vaseline on it. Yeah, I think it's the GameCube controller. It like rots out. Yeah. I'm checking his Twitter right now. Yeah, I see it. The rubber reversion. Uh, hooked hell? up my Wii U for the first time in a while, and the thumbsticks are sticky. Yeah, that's that's it. That hat, like, ah, yeah, I have like old old action figures and stuff that are like just like gummy and sticky for yeah. some reason. Like that's a thing that happens to plastic, like, yeah, poorly made plastic. And apparently, it happens to the to the Wii U also. Yeah. I, I guess maybe if it gets too hot, it melts. I don't know. Oh. I, I don't know. Something about the environment it's in probably affects True. it, or it just gets old and breaks like down it's, over time. It's too humid. Yeah, something like that. Uh. Mango Puncher says the PS2 controller does that too. Yeah, you know what? Yes, it does. I'm probably remembering this from working at GameStop, <laughs> just having all this shit that just oh a thousand percent is is bad. Yeah. So check your Wii U's. I mean, hopefully there's a fix. Uh, yeah. There might be a fix in in deleting some game data. Maybe it's not deleting the save and it's just deleting the uh, the, the 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 like stored game data, yeah. like like ripping from the disc and stuff. Uh, so hopefully there's a fix for that. Yeah. Uh, take a look at it. Make sure it's still good. I wonder what the what about the memory gets all messed up. It's probably just uh, uh, just from lack of use. It's probably the way the internal components work. They expect mm -hmm. it to be turned on at least every so often. Right. That's uh, an issue I heard about is going to happen soon with uh, uh, new Nintendo Switch games. Like, like the... Those cartridges are also the NAND type yeah. cartridges, so uh, they will just die eventually. Yeah, and they will die quicker than even Super Nintendo games. Yeah, like those will last. Those cartridges will last longer than the new Nintendo mm -hmm. Switch cartridges. So, uh, NAND memory, uh, we can't rely on it, no, we and cannot. that that sucks. Uh, hey, thank you to Pliskin for the Prime. For Caleb Fox with the nine months, have you ever gotten in trouble for showing ROMs in a video? Uh, no. No. 
Never. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine how like you're showing them, but you're not showing like how to get them. Yeah, that's the thing is that I'm not showing how to get the stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, scared to do any sort of Nintendo Switch emulation stuff, but I do plan on eventually doing a video (laughs) on Nintendo Switch emulation. Because like, I also think it's a little immoral uh, because um, I know that people are going to use it to try to get free games that you could very easily buy right now. Yeah. Yeah, I like emulation more so for the stuff that is uh hard or impossible to get right now. Yeah. So uh Kikoba, thanks for the 40 months, went to the doctor the other day and all they did was draw blood from my neck. Do not go to Dr. Acula. No, oh, I better cancel my appointment. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> uh Nico Moso, thanks for the 16 months. Uh okay. Anyway, uh, there's more about the dying systems that we have. Yes. Uh, particularly the 3DS eShop. Uh, the closure of that means the loss of a majority, a vast majority of Pokemon games. Yes. Um, I'll skip a half paragraph. Uh, the 3DS and Wii U eShops are two weeks away from shutting down on March 27th and taking digital access to the systems library with them in the process. From a preservation standpoint, this is already a travesty. But for the Pokemon series, this is going to have a particularly devastating effect on the access and functionality of the entire franchise. Keep in mind, we are playing games like Sword, like Scarlet and Violet or Sword and Shield on the Switch. Pokemon is primarily a handheld series. Sure, the series has, co- has some console spinoffs like Pokemon Stadium and Snap. But by and large, these pocket monsters have always been able to fit in your pocket. Now the 3DS's digital storefront is shutting down and it's taking away a sizable chunk of the currently available Pokemon games. As it turns out, Nintendo's lack of care for preserving its games has already done a number on, on the franchise uh, before this. Phil Salvador, the library director at the Video Game History Foundation, laid it out plainly in a graphic on Twitter. The chart illustrates that by the time the 3DS and Wii U eShops uh, shut down later this month, only about 26% of the Pokemon video games released in America will be readily available for purchase. 26% of all Pokemon games will be available for purchase. Uh, will will not... No. Will be removed. They are no, now, no. and they will be removed. Only 26% of Pokemon games will be available. Oh. Meaning 74% of Pokemon <laughs> games will be unavailable Holy to shit. You. Yes. That is crazy. Here's, here's the tweet. Oh, there's a pie chart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pokemon is one of the biggest franchises in gaming. This is according to Phil Salvador. Uh, but did you did you know that once Nintendo closes the 3DS and Wii U eShops next month, 74% of all Pokemon games released in the U.S. will be commercially unavailable in any form? Yep. Uh, and he uh, goes on to say, here's the data if you want to see it. Games, uh, The game list is taken from Bulbapedia. Quick correction to the graph. Uh, there are 88 games. So... 80, 74% of 88 games. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Even before the 3DS and Wii U eShops go away, swaths of Pokemon history are already difficult to legally access. A whopping 41% of Pokemon games are already available through physical copies only as Nintendo has yet to add games from the Game Boy Advance or original DS RPGs on any digital storefront. This ranges from mainline games like Ruby and Sapphire to spinoffs like Pokemon Conquest. With the eShop shut down, the 3DS games like Sudden Moon will only be available through physical copies, which will inevitably become expensive collector's items that are sold for obscene amounts on places like eBay. On top of losing native 3DS games, the Pokemon company ported the first two generations of Pokemon games to the system through the Virtual Console, which was a rare example of Nintendo trying to keep old games accessible by legitimate means. These titles are also compatible with the Pokemon Bank, which meant players could transfer their Pokemon from these games to modern entries. Now, there will be no way to play the original Pokemon Red, Blue, or Yellow through Nintendo storefronts, and physical cartridges of these games have long succumbed to dying internal batteries, making some features like Gold and Silver's Day and Night Cycle obsolete, or in worst cases, making it impossible to save your progress. I have a video on that on the with uh, on a YouTube short and a TikTok if you want to save your pokemon saves uh while getting physical copies of the games can't 
be a, uh, while getting physical copies of games can be a hassle, hardware like the Analog Pocket has ma- uh, does make playing them relatively simple despite Nintendo's completely moving away from native backwards compatibility. This is assuming the old cartridges you have are still usable. Uh, further, the 3DS eShop is... Uh, ha- sorry. Further, the 3DS eShop, it has acted as a bridge between the series past and present because the system is the only way to transfer old Pokemon from old games to modern ones. Since Diamond and Pearl, the Pokemon series has allowed you to transfer your monsters from old games to new ones. That has become more complicated since Sword and Shield did away with all encompassing with the all-encompassing National Pokedex, but the act of trading old Pokemon and carrying them with you to future games has been a special part of the series for many fans. When the 3DS eShop shuts down, it will take the Pokemon Bank and Transporter, two apps exclusive to the system, with it. These apps were used to store and transfer old Pokemon and are compatible with Pokemon Home, the series' modern console agnostic storage app. Those who have the apps in their digital collection will still be able to download them to their 3DS, but they will be unavailable to anyone who comes into the series after March 27th. So, I was under the impression that Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Transporter and Pokemon Home were free with a subscription. So and, I don't know how and it, it says works, direct so. download. So yeah. I I'm under the impression that these will still be available because it, the store just isn't going to take money. Well, no, the store is shutting down. Yeah, but if you own games already, you can still download them. Right. So but why if, can't you get free games? No, games that are free. if you already have it, yes, you can get it. But if you just bought a 3DS, mm-hmm. like on the you know aftermarket, and you're just getting into Pokemon, and you try to download the Pokemon Bank after March 27th, you can't. Right. That's the point they're trying to make. And it's... The, it, the point I'm trying to make is, if it's a free game, why can't you? Well, because I, I'm assuming... I'm assuming that, you know, even if you already own the Pokemon Bank, mm-hmm. they're shutting down the store, which is which probably also means they're shutting down servers. So I can only imagine this if, uh, like, the only th- like if you go to the eShop on 3DS next month, yeah, maybe it will just bring up the games you already purchased, yeah, and it's like re-download question mark. Because otherwise, uh, why not just have a list of free games? Well, because you're still paying for uh, server space to store but those they, free games. But you can re-download games that you already own. So they already have the server space. Right, but it probably costs them more to keep up new games up there for you to right. buy. And, and there's not enough money going into that. But this is a, a necessary feature. Pokemon Bank. Yeah, so yeah. too bad. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm I'm very curious to see how that's how transferring Pokemon is going to work. Yeah, I, part of me wants to download Bank Transporter and Home. Oh, I guess it's just Bank and Transporter. Yeah. Uh, part of me wants to download that, and part of me wants to not download it and see if I still can mm-hmm. in like a week and a half. Yeah. Also, got to find out if our Wii U works. <laughs> you know, I care a lot less about that. <laughs> I am curious There's, to find. It. I, I kind of want to know. I kind of yeah, just want to like, see I wanna what know. the problem is. Yeah. But there is zero reason for me to turn that. I know. Thing on. Like, no, every game that like I would want to play on there is available somewhere else. Yeah. You know. You know, I uh, realized I'm an idiot when I got the Wii mm-hmm. from my parents' house to play Wii Sports. Yes. I plugged it into the Frame Meister, and then I was like, "Wait, I could have <laughs> just played it on the Wii U. It yeah. would have been HDMI and everything." So that was a yeah. that was a whoopsies for me. Uh, Tech Matters says the selling infrastructure is going away. I guess yeah, because yeah. then you have to buy it for for zero dollars. Yeah, but still, that's what I'm most curious about. Uh, because that is not an official word from Nintendo. It's not like they're like, oh, official yeah, they word. Have... You're getting rid of. You're not gonna have Pokemon uh, Bank. Yeah, I don't think they they've said anything about the Pokemon Bank. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if they're sh- shutting down the storefront is just the first step towards shutting down everything else. Yeah. I'm, I always brought, like we're losing a lot of very important games that, yeah. that 
I mean, we already ha- we already have like a scarcity of retro games. Like, yeah. like there's already so many games that just aren't available for purchase right now. And Pokemon uh, has these games in a vault, and a lot of them. This is the only place you can get them. And mm-hmm. this was when the or whenever we talk about the 3ds eShop closing, I always bring up Pokemon games because they're yeah. the ones that most people are going to want to play. And these are li- this is literally the only place you could buy them. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else is there? I always bring up Dark Void because it's the only other fucking game I can <laughs> think about. Well, I mean, uh, with the 3DS, it's like all the physical games you could have, you know, you can download them as a system. So, like, if you missed, like, Samus Returns or uh, New Super Mario Brothers 2 or yeah. uh, whatever, uh, A Link Between Worlds or games like that. I'm checking, uh, I'm checking uh, Amazon right now because I thought 3DS games were still kind of available. No, they are a little bit. I mean, you could buy it for forty bucks. That's MSRP on Amazon. Okay, just right there. Uh, I was under the impression that you can like still find them at GameStop and stuff. I'm sure you can at GameStop, like certain GameStops. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even talking about used. I'm talking about brand new. Yeah. So I, there's some of the fringe stuff you're not going to be able to get. Yeah. Some of the some of the weirder off brand, off brand. Some of the weirder <laughs> stuff that's like not a uh you know triple a uh first party game but yeah do you think that this is uh do you think that the pokemon company will have a solution to this do you think that they're gonna no eventually no okay no (laughs) i think if we're lucky we will see these games brought over to uh we'll see the game boy and game boy advance games brought to switch online and they'll have incorporate some form of access to pokemon home that's See, if we're lucky. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think they're going to do nothing in the short term. Mm-hmm. I think that we're just not going to have these games anymore. And I think in the long term, eventually they will release a package for purchase. I don't think that they're going to show up on Nintendo Switch Online because uh, they're too valuable well, for that. It, I think it especially sucks because, you know, people get attached to their Pokemon because it's their Pokemon. And they're not going to be able to transfer their Pokemon from game to game to game now. Right. You know, there's this, like, big gap in it that they're just not going to be able to bring the Pikachu that they've been training since they were five all the way up to the next game. Yeah, that's a huge problem. Were you able to take your Pikachu? I've always been fascinated by by transferring your Pokemon from Game Boy all the way up to the new shit. Mm -hmm. So... Were you ever able to take your Pokemon from a Game Boy and put it into your 3DS version of Pokemon Yellow? I think so. Because that seems wacky and wild. Maybe not to to the 3DS eShop version of Pokemon Yellow. Because maybe that's functionality in Pokemon Bank or Transporter. But I, I think you were able to take your Pokemon to... From Pokemon Yellow all the way up to, you know, whatever the 3DS, or whatever the DS game was. I think somewhere around the DS is where the uh, the kink in the system is. Yeah. And it makes it, like, really hard. Yeah, especially there. when they got rid of GBA compatibility. Yeah. Game Boy couldn't transfer to Game Boy Advance, but GBA can get to Switch Pokemon. Oh, That's what it is. That's why they remade Red and Blue. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That sucks. That's like the first thing I would want to do. Yeah. Is just go from regular Game Boy to Game Boy Advance. Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. Not Gen 1 and Gen 2, but you can do Gen 3 up to current. That sucks. Yeah. Well, there is uh, a, a, an app. Uh, Pokemon Save File Editor. PK Hex. Pokemon Hex. Uh, you get it on your computer, you get your save file off of your cartridge using various means, and you can literally just change the save file to have any Pokemon you want. There you go. So you can have the Pokemon that is the ex- an exact copy of the Pokemon <laughs> from your original Game Boy game. And then you take that and you put it back on your Game Boy Advance. You mean the, the, the Charizard I had that was level 100 through just like farming red candy, the rare candies, and just stuffing it down his throat? Yep. Perfect. Talk, yeah, you can have that and, and transfer it to your Game Boy Advance and then take that and bring it all the way up 
to your friggin' Scarlet and Violet because I know how much you want to play Scarlet and Violet. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is sad. It's, yeah. it's it's sad to see a lot of these games go, especially the Pokemon games. Uh, I don't know any other examples of games that like just aren't available. I, I like to bring up Sonic Advance because you can't get that anywhere. But I don't yeah. even think that's on. That's not on. The that was show. not. There were um, Game Gear games though on 3DS eShop that just aren't going to be available right Game now. Game Gear, really? Pretty sure, yeah. Oh my god. Uh, I'm sp- particularly interested in the virtual console stuff. Yeah, 3DS eShop. I mean. I don't think the library was that crazy. Uh, no. Box Boy. That's one. People like that one, yeah. Yeah, that was a kind of a big deal. Uh, 3DS, 3D Classics Kirby's Adventure. Well, that's available now, right? Yes. Yeah, that's on the well, that, Online. Those were, that was a remake that uh, implemented the, uh, the stereoscopic 3D. Oh, well, who cares about that? <laughs> Kirby's Adventure is the NES one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can play that now. My Nintendo P Cross, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I don't think we're missing that much. <laughs> Someone might be a really big fan of Legend of Zelda P Cross. The Armadillo Man game. Let's not forget <laughs> our Fallen Heroes, the Armadillo Man game. Yeah. Uh, it's the virtual console stuff I'm most upset about. Mm hmm. Uh, but a lot of the good virtual console stuff came in the uh, ambassador program. Yeah. You know, if you bought the 3DS like right when it came out, you just got like 20 awesome yeah, virtual including console games. GBA games that were never available. Yeah. Yeah. Still kind of annoyed that Mario RPG isn't on Switch Online with all the other SNES games since it was on the SNES Classic. That's still not on Switch Online? Apparently not. Huh. That is very stupid. Yeah. So probably some weird square licensing thing. Probably. But they were able to put it on the SNES Classic, so that's weird. Yeah. Um Okay. What else do we have here? Uh Nico Moso, thanks for the 16 months. I think I said that already. What else do we have? Uh oh, the final Mario movie. Yes, trailer. there was a there was a Mario movie direct, which is basically a glorified announcement for the final trailer. So I don't want to play it on screen because it might get us uh, cease yeah. and desisted. Uh, but yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it looks very good. I, I like everything I've seen so yeah. far. Um, we heard a lot more of Chris Pratt speaking. Yep. yep. Look, he if, sounds fine. If you're not on board with him now, you probably never will be. He sounds fine. Yeah. He'll He'll do fine. It'll be fine. I'm not too wor- worried about him. Uh, there's uh, the Sand Kingdom thing from uh, from Mario Odyssey. Is yeah, it? that's pretty cool with the floating pyramids and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, it looks like so th- in this little direct that they had on the, the day before Mario Day. Yeah, uh, the directors were talking about how the Mario carts, the carts were from the Jungle Kingdom. So it seems like Donkey Kong. And then you see it in the trailer. You yeah. see like monkeys going all over the place when they show where they're getting the carts. Mm-hmm. So it looks like Donkey Kong's the one providing the carts. Right. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Also, fire Donkey Kong's kind of that's a big cool. deal. That's cool, yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. It it, definitely... It's the first time we've ever seen Donkey Kong with Fire Flower. Yeah, and there's, uh, I think it's right coming up right now. Yeah, there's a whole like 2D section. Mm-hmm. So it, it definitely looks like it's pulling not just from you know, one particular Mario game is pulling from all Mario games, all kinds of Mario games yeah. between the go-karting, the old 2D versions, the modern 3D stuff. Yeah, and they uh, they called that, the trailer with the Donkey Kong reveal, they called that Smash. Yeah. So like Smash they're, Brothers, they're, they yeah. take it for Smash Brothers and stuff. Uh, So yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Uh, the, the, this little sequence with the Mario Kart and Mario doing all this crazy shit. Mad Max, uh, Rainbow Road, as they were it. Yeah. <laughs> It looks really good. Uh, Chris Pratt is very unenthused in the uh, beginning. Yeah. When he's with in the lineup with all the other actors. He, I, he I doesn't do, want to be there. I do love all the memes being like, how long can Chris Pratt go before he has to admit he's never played a Mario game? Yeah. <laughs> also, Bowser doesn't know what a spiny is called. Did you catch that? Oh, yeah. Bowser's like, yeah, Goombas, Goombas. Whatever you guys are. Whatever these things are called. Uh, so it looks good. Yeah, uh, they also pushed it up uh, two days. 
Yeah, so it's coming out April 5th instead of April 7th. Yeah, so uh, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. I, think, I, got, I, got yeah. No, I got no problem. I think so I was... The trailer came on when we we're watching TV, and I go to my wife. I think I actually, I think I actually have to go and see this yeah, movie. You do for, for work. So I was looking it up, uh, and it looked like the earliest showings were on that Wednesday at eleven a.m. A.m. Yeah, well, I can take off for work. <laughs> <laughs> so that was weird because usually yeah. it's like the night before yeah. at like seven o'clock at night. So I gotta, I gotta double check and see if. Maybe it's coming out on Tuesday. Maybe. Take a day off the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll have we to do, see. We do the podcast live from the theater. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, they had on Friday, which was Mario Day, at the Nintendo store, they had like a big event. Yeah. Which was just the reveal of the shoes, which yeah. are fine. It looks cool. Why is that But they a, made a huge deal about why it. Why is it such a big deal? I, so here's I got some insight about okay. it. They had the shoes that they made. They made real life looking Mario shoes. Yeah, there's there there's one in the world, uh-huh. and they're made by Red Wing shoes. Yes, it's like a sponsorship collab mm-hmm. thing. If you want Mario shoes, you gotta get Red Wing shoes. Yeah. Um, they also had a replica of the Mario van parked outside. Yes, uh, which is very cool. That van was only there for a few hours, and then it disappeared. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, I think it will be at PAX next weekend. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll see it there. Uh, but E went to the opening of the Nintendo store with the shoes. Yeah. It was very yeah, stupid. Uh, and if you were one of the first, like, 15 people online, mm-hmm. they gave you this big uh, cement block that has the pressing of the shoes in it. <laughs> Yeah. So just like the feet in cement. Yeah. Okay. It's very interesting. He the way he was explaining the event, he said that it was uh it seemed like it was a fashion event. Like like they yeah. they they invited uh fashion influencers and because it was a shoe company. Yeah. It wasn't run by Nintendo, this event. It was run by I guess Illumination hired like a company that was more on the fashion side okay. or something because they didn't know how to handle it. Okay. To handle this event. Why just the shoes then? Like why not that get new era to do the hats or Ooh. like Levi to do the overalls? I guess they thought the shoes would get like hype beasts interested, but you couldn't actually buy the shoes. No, you could, but like <laughs> if you want to get people interested, have more than just the shoes because yeah. like when you do just the shoes it's very confusing yes like what are you trying to tell us here they do look pretty cool they do look cool they, they look, look very cool. nice they look very well put together i saw the video of them like making the shoes it was it was cool i but... saw the video of the unveiling of the shoes and somebody commented you can hear an audible sigh when they really when they <laughs> take the little blanket off of the shoes i also like how they edit out that the, the the first attempt to take the the sheet off like yeah, they, they, stuck, they messed it up so they had to do it again um oh uh me and wood were what there were influencers invited me right. and wood were wondering why we weren't invited uh and then we checked our emails and we were both invited nah so I, but i don't know if i would have gone it w- i would have had to get there at like eight in the morning yeah and you don't and, wake up till noon <laughs> exactly and uh, you don't get any. They didn't give influencers the sh- the, the the big uh, 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 cement block yeah. with his footprint in it. So, so I wouldn't have gotten that. Yeah, I would have had to got get there at like seven in the morning and wait on long. No, you would have had to gotten there a lot people. earlier than seven in the morning. Yeah. So uh, camp out there like it's a console launch. So I don't know if it would have even been worth it to yeah. go. Uh, but yeah, they had that. Uh, there's certain dates on the website, the the Mario movie website, about where the van will be because the yeah. van's actually pretty cool. It's mm-hmm. just a replica of the van, but uh, it might make it to a town near you. Anyway, uh, Bagel Denizen, yo, what up, Brooks? Hey. How you doing? Thanks for the sixty-two months. Jesus Christ. Does anyone else have Wii U boot up problems? Uh oh, trying to figure out if it's me or just the watch battery. Uh, that's what we were talking about before. Yeah. Uh, it's not just you. It's, it's, it's the world. It, it, it's everyone's 
Wii U. The RAM yeah. is is gonna get shitty. I mean, if it is the just the the CMOS battery in there, hopefully that's an easy replacement. I, but I think it feels like it might be more than that. If it's that, it's wiping something. Yeah, as, as far as I as I know, because they're saying it's the NAND memory. I don't think it's as easy as just putting a new yeah. watch battery in. Anyway, uh, new characters coming to Mario Kart 8. Wow. Woo! Uh, with Wave 4 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC out in the wild, players have noticed the character select screen is missing a few entries. These entries are denoted by five question marks indicating more racers are coming in the future. I've never heard of this. Uh, there are at least two more DLC waves slated to release, so it appears Nintendo will have to drop multiple racers per wave. Uh, the latest character to be added to the game was Birdo, who came in Wave 4 which also added the Fruit Cup and the Boomerang Cups, uh, composed of Tor Amsterdam Drift, GBA Riverside Park, uh, Wii DK Summit, Yoshi's Island, uh, Tor Bangkok Rush, uh, DS Mario Circuit, GameCube, uh, Waluigi Stadium, and Tor Singapore Speedway. Booster course packs feature classic courses appearing from the Mario Kart series across Wii, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS, and Mario Kart Tour games in the series. The pass includes six separate waves, each uh, with eight courses, uh, all to be released by the end of 2023. You can pick up the Booster Course Pass with a paid Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack membership or by purchasing the Booster Course Pass for $25 in the eShop. I hope it's not just to fill out space because Birdo does kind of mess up the whole <laughs> structure of the character select screen. Yeah. But yeah, I I had never heard of this before. It looks like there are now because of Birdo, there are now five extra question marks on the character select screen. Yeah. So and wave four is supposed to be the end, right? Of no, uh, I think there's. Well, it said that we're getting two more. Oh, two more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, then there's more room for more uh, characters. But who now? Who are, who's coming? Do we know? <laughs> who there, do we think was coming? There better be new characters. Yeah. I mean. It only makes sense. Uh, Maybe some, a third party character. Some people were theorizing that that the next uh, Mario Kart will be more like a Smash type thing, because now look at you got you got all the Mario characters, and then you got Birdo, and then you got Inklings, yeah, then you got Link, Link's and you got the, uh, the Animal Crossing people. So maybe all of them. I know. Maybe Star Fox. Uh, the arcade game has Pac Man because it was made by Namco and. The Taiko no Tatsujin drum. Yeah. Which I keep forgetting about. So maybe they could add Pac Man and the Taiko no Tatsujin drum. That would be nuts yeah. if they did that. Because that was made by Bandai, you said? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Bandai Namco, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, this is the, this website, Games Hub, tries to theorize, and they said Pac Man could make a wild cameo appearance. Yeah. Uh, Taiko no Tatsujin Don Chan could also make an appearance. Mm-hmm. Funky Kong. All right, that's a wild one. Just throwing that out there. No, I mean, he's a Kong. Uh, Wiggler. Why? <laughs> Could also return. That w- Just for the novelty of having a big worm riding a cart. When was Wiggler? Rob is an absolute delight. And Kamek. Yeah, Kamek. Yeah, Rob was in the DS game. Yeah, why isn't Kamek here? Yeah. So it's probably going to be Rob and Kamek. Rob was in the DS game? Yeah. Rob was in a uh, Mario Kart DS. He was. You had to unlock him. I didn't know that. Yeah. I had no idea. Did I unlock him? Jake unlocked him. Did we have him? Did we have Mario Kart? We had Mario Kart DS. I, I don't know. remember if I unlocked him though. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. Then yeah, I think he he might yeah. he, that might actually be plausible. Otherwise, give me like Star Fox or something or yeah. Captain Falcon. <laughs> That'd be fucking cool. Yeah, but then people are gonna want a F Zero game. It's gonna be a whole thing. So I I I got the F Zero like suit like like my my me has like the Captain Falcon like helmet and yeah shit. so there's something there oh Kirby oh yeah Kirby could, yeah. could end up there Kirby's only a big deal in uh, Smash Brothers because of uh, Sakurai yeah all right anyway is it time it's that time of the podcast to get in deep into the uh microsoft and sony uh war for the soul of activision blizzard but specifically call of duty yes uh this time around sony is worried that microsoft will sabotage call of duty for the playstation oh no 
Uh, Sony has laid out its concerns about Microsoft's proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard, including a host of fears about the future of Activision's Call of Duty franchise. In a new document submitted to the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, uh, Sony says it's worried that Microsoft could raise the price of Call of Duty, make it only available on its own Xbox Game Pass subscription service, and even strategically or incidentally degrade the quality and performance of Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony cites a specific hypo- a specific hypothetical situation, nailed it, where Microsoft could release a game release a Call of Duty game on PlayStation that has bugs and errors on the final level. Here's Sony's full example. Did, did we talk about this on the podcast already? No. I think I just saw a tweet about this. This is the most fucking weird childish schoolyard <laughs> shit I've ever heard. It is it is really getting it's really getting there. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft, this is per Sony. Microsoft may release a PlayStation version of Call of Duty where bugs and errors emerge only in the game's final level or after later updates. Even if such degradations could be swiftly detected, any remedy would likely come too late, by which time the gaming community would have lost confidence in PlayStation as a go-to venue to play Call of Duty. Indeed, as Modern Warfare 2 attests, Call of Duty is most often purchased in just the first few weeks of release. If if it became known that the game's performance on PlayStation was worse than on Xbox, Call of Duty gamers could decide to switch to Xbox for fear of playing their favorite game at a second class or less competitive venue. Sony leaves ambiguous uh, whether this could be intentional damage or a plays best on Xbox scenario where Microsoft's closest ties to Call of Duty would make it work better on their platform, But more broadly, Sony fears Microsoft might strategically try to sabotage Call of Duty on PlayStation in multiple ways. By degrading the quality and performance of Call of Duty on PlayStation compared to Xbox, degrading Call of Duty to ignore PlayStation-specific features, for example, better control haptics, or restricting, degrading, or not investing in the multiplayer experience on PlayStation. It's not entirely surprising that Sony would be concerned about Microsoft prioritizing Xbox on its own Xbox platform, Uh, and ignoring Sony's hardware features, both companies have been battling it out for Call of Duty rights for years with exclusive skins, bonuses, and packs all part of strategies uh, for both companies to entice console gamers onto their platforms. It's unlikely Microsoft would intentionally sabotage Call of Duty on PlayStation with bugs, though. While that might make PlayStation console look bad, it's far more likely to generate backlash for Activision and Microsoft instead. The reality could be far more subtle. Microsoft and Activision may eventually prioritize bug fixes on Xbox versions of the game because their developers are simply more familiar with that platform or issuing fixes could be quicker on Xbox. There are a whole host of reasonable concerns about Call of Duty gaining uh, subtle advantages on Xbox, but they're unlikely to add up to corporate strategy to hurt Call of Duty on PlayStation and lose revenue it drives uh, for both the platform holder and publisher. Sony is also worried about Microsoft keeping Call of Duty on Xbox Game Pass and not letting Sony offer the title on its own PlayStation Plus service. Conversely, in its own filings to the CMA, Microsoft says that any Call of Duty game in in a Microsoft multi-game subscription service is eligible for inclusion in Sony's multi-game subscription service at the same time and for the same duration. But Sony clearly isn't happy with the licensing terms or pricing The document is heavily redacted, but Sony says the terms would commercially destroy Sony Interactive Entertainment's multi-game subscription business model. Microsoft has offered Sony a 10-year deal on Call of Duty, but PlayStation Maker uh, has not yet signed the license. Microsoft revealed that it signed a binding 10-year agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo platforms just hours before meeting with EU regulators last month. Microsoft then announced a similar deal with NVIDIA hours later in an attempt to pressure Sony to... Uh, agree to similar terms i like it's such a stretch to assume that microsoft would ever want to make a worse version of their game for a different console yeah for the benefit that oh if you get it on xbox it'll run good yeah like i it's still their product that they're selling and it's going to have such a bad look on the product if it doesn't work on a different console yeah i think if if that situation were to happen Mm -hmm. like there would be such huge backlash to it that microsoft and activision would actively try to fix it and prioritize fixing it Mm -hmm. to you know help rebuild their public image and regain public trust yeah it would look bad for the whole even if 
even if the public didn't assume that it was nefarious, mm-hmm. the public would be like, yo, this product sucks. Yeah. Like, I don't want, like, this is a bad look for Call of Duty as a whole, yeah. not not just the PlayStation. Yeah. It's so stupid to assume that they would ever want to do something like that. Yeah. It's, it, and we've, we've seen, because Microsoft has a lot of games on Sony. They've got Minecraft. They've got Deathloop. They've got uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, and those those games all run fine. Those, yeah. those, aren't, those games aren't borked in any real way. So, you know, somebody... uh, MLB The Show is a Sony game that's on Game Pass. And mm-hmm. that's not really any different from the PlayStation version. I was looking through the uh, tweet replies to this tweet from Tom Warren, who I think broke in the news. Yeah. Uh, because I remember there being some interesting comments. And one of them that I can't find now said, if Sony is saying this, then they must have thought of it first. Yeah. <laughs> they is basically saying like Sony might be thinking about making their games shittier on other platforms. Yeah. And they do have PC versions of their games, but they're fine. But they're, they're, run, yeah, they're those are fine. generally excellent from what yeah. I've heard. But I did find some tweets that were that were interesting or funny. Okay. Uh this guy says, uh how would they do this? Would they give it to Ubisoft? <laughs> Meaning, like, make their <laughs> yeah, games yeah. shittier on purpose. Uh, and then this guy goes, uh, Sony are arguing that their own game certification system wouldn't be effective then. Yeah, Meaning, that's like, true. if the game's borked on their system, then they wouldn't be able to tell because their own game certification system isn't good. Yeah. So it's a, they're arguing you, that they are argue? ineffective at proving that a game isn't going to work. I think if Cyberpunk has taught us anything, it's that, you know, get the certification system that both companies is means kind of fucking bad. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, for you're 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 right. That whole yeah. si- that whole cyberpunk thing, it's just because friggin' cyberpunk was a big triple A game that everybody was hyped about, so they were they were afraid to delay it. They yeah. didn't want to be like, hey, you guys can't release this on our console. That well, yeah. Xbox didn't be want to be the ones to say it. And then PlayStation was like, well, we don't want Xbox to have it on their console. So we'll just let it happen. Right. But Which is Sony a real super one, fucked up way Sony to Sony was the it. one who pulled Cyberpunk from the system for like a year. But that wasn't until after yes. it launched. Yeah. yeah. And because they have the power because they're the top of the yeah. selling console right now. So that is uh, part one of the big uh, uh, controversy, the big drama, big drama yeah. in the Activision and Inten- the Activision, Microsoft, Sony kerfuffle that's going yes. on in the EU right now. Yes. Well, it's really going on all over the world. Yes. Um, we move on to part two. Okay. Uh, Activision Blizzard executive posts memes mocking Sony for losing Call of Duty to Microsoft. Oh, God. Uh Lulu Cheng uh, Mazervi, the CCO of Activision Blizzard, posted a, on Twitter about a recent partnership between Microsoft and Call of Duty. The meme uh, includes three images. The first is a person riding a bike. The second uh, then has the same person struggling on the bike with the caption, refuses to accept a guaranteed long-term access to Call of Duty. The third then has the person having fallen off the bike with the words, what if we lose access to Call of Duty? Uh, this is a slap bag. This slap bag is just another example and development in the drama surrounding the Microsoft deal with Activision Blizzard and Sony's pushback on the deal. At the beginning of February, it was reported that new claims indicate that Sony has cut off communication with Microsoft uh, regarding uh, discussions of the potential Activision Blizzard merger. Uh, the meme comes after Missouri also fired back at Sony for trying to put a stop to the future merger. Uh, quote. Microsoft is doing exactly what they said they do, whereas Sony continues to rebuff the opportunity to get long-term agreement for Call of Duty and is trying to undermine the deal uh, to protect its two-decade dominance in gaming. The CCO then went on to add in a follow-up tweet how we're confident regulators will find that our proposed merger will promote competition and create more opportunities for workers and better games for our players. Um, Not in this article, but... uh, Lulu Chen, Chen uh, Missouri also tweeted that uh, she exposed something that uh, Sony president Jack Ryan said behind closed doors. He said, we don't we don't want a, your 10 year deal. We want to stop this merger. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing her tweets. They were yeah. uh, the, it was crazy how candid she was. being. Yeah. She was just throwing shade left and right. Also, like 
it's interesting how much she wants this. <laughs> well, I'm sure she's a she's an executive <laughs> vice president of corporate affairs and a CCO at Activision. Oh, so I guess she'd get a huge she's, yeah, check. She's if got this goes a through. lot of money <laughs> riding on this. Yeah. Um, I also don't think she's helping. Because she's just going on Twitter and yelling at Sony. No, <laughs> but it's definitely great for it, the drama. It is. It is. She is a thousand percent just bullying them. Yeah. She's going. She's got a lot of tweets. Yeah. She also tweeted on February 24th, being normal is boring. <laughs> just a regular guy. Yeah. Just a regular guy like us. Uh, took a big break, though, in, in tweeting after a while. Yeah. I'm trying to see. I'm, I'm going through all of her. Yeah, her going on. Her, recently, she's been posting a lot about the Silicon Valley bank situation. Yeah, which is a whole nother whole nother thing. That's that's outside of our wheelhouse. Yeah. Uh, here she said on March eighth, Microsoft offered Sony a ten year agreement on on far better terms than Sony would ever get from Activision Blizzard. Um, Activision has also offered Sony guaranteed long term access to Call of Duty, but they keep refusing. Why? The CEO of SIE answered the question in Brussels. In his words, I don't want a new Call of Duty deal. I just want to block your merger. That's that's what I was talking about before. Yeah, that's fucked up. That should be able to be brought up in court. Yeah. Because their whole argument is is that they were getting a bad deal. Yeah. And it's like, no, you're not getting a bad deal. You don't want it because you want to block the merger. And you're telling the courts that we're going to give you a bad deal. Yeah. You're lying in front of the court. But now. I feel like... You know, that I feel like she just broke a gentleman's agreement right there. And I, you know, not that that has any like legal weight or anything, but like there is some like, you know, ways to like protect yourself from that, you know, mm-hmm. like from somebody breaking that. Well, if I were her and I had millions of dollars riding on this, yeah. I would also break that gentleman's <laughs> agreement. What do I care? I'm out of this fucking industry anyway if this goes through. True. And that seems like the best way to make it go through is to prove that they lied. Yeah. You know, that their act, that their argument is completely invalid. Mm -hmm. Because also remember, you have to prove, you have to prove all of this stuff that we all know to a court that knows nothing about video games. Yeah. They Uh, only know about the law. Yeah. Well, I think they might have some proof or at least some evidence uh, pointing to their concern. Nice segue to our next article. Well, thank you very much. Um, Sony thinks Starfield being an Xbox exclusive justifies why it's worried about Call of Duty. Sony Sony is pointing to Starfield as evidence that Microsoft might not be entirely trustworthy when it comes to keeping Call of Duty multi-platform. How much of an impact Call of Duty not being on PlayStation consoles will actually have is completely up in the air, but Sony is dead set on the idea that it will be catastrophic. Uh, Just last week, Sony suggested that Microsoft could release... Uh, an unoptimized version of Call of Duty on PlayStation. We just talked about that. Now, in a statement to the UK government's, uh, to the CMA, Sony has used Starfield as evidence that Microsoft can't guarantee Call of Duty will be easily available on PlayStation. In Sony's statement, it noted how Microsoft originally said it would not, it would not have the incentive to cease or limit making ZeniMax games available for purchase on rival consoles when attempting to acquire ZeniMax Media and the, subsequently Bethesda. This has obviously ended up not being so, uh, as Sony has also noted that both Starfield and Elder Scrolls are also going to be Xbox console exclusives. Starfield will obviously end up being one of the biggest games of the year, so it's not too surprising Sony is trying to use that uh, as a way to say Microsoft might not be so trustworthy when it comes to Call of Duty. The only problem is Microsoft literally signed a deal with Nintendo last year guaranteeing Call of Duty games on the latter's platform for at least 10 years, even if not everyone is confident the games can be optimized for the Switch. Uh, Microsoft has also been trying to form a deal with Sony, but the details of that are obviously not public. That's not true. There's one detail. Brad Smith, uh, the VP of Microsoft, keep, as allegedly walks around with the deal in his back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he, was in, he was in Brussels like for the EU commission, and he, and he said, like, I have in my back pocket the, the deal with Sony. It's ready to be signed. They just need to sign it. Oh like, why are you walking around with that? To prove a point. So, so I actually kind of agree with this, with Sony here on this one, because yeah, this, be- this is like, I, I've this been is this the up. biggest uh, point that they have. I've been bringing this up too. Like Starfield, you know, it's the next big game from Bethesda, the makers of Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Some of the biggest games on the planet. 
and it's not coming to a Sony system. Yeah. They made a big deal when they revealed the, the first date for Starfield. Sarah Bond said, yes, it's exclusive, meaning to Microsoft. Yeah, so which is not what I thought it was going to no. be when they announced Starfield. Yeah. I, I thought Microsoft was going to honor it like they have been for yeah, for they a honored the games. Death Loop and the Ghostwire Tokyo deals, and now. But I guess those like, were just too. I guess the, close. those were pre-existing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it makes sense, but uh, it is unfortunate. But yeah. yeah, this is Sony's biggest card that they have. Is like, yeah. look, they could say that they're going to do it, but they're they haven't in the past and, yeah. and, and they're not right now they're keep they're they're eating up a lot of game studios and they're taking games away from us yeah but uh they have a 10-year deal waiting to go with call yeah. of duty so i guess uh their argument is also that maybe microsoft wants to make it exclusive after that 10 years but i think call of duty is so big that uh leaving it open to everybody yeah gets them more money than making it yeah i feel like something like call of duty like i think that game specifically like they know like that's got to be multi-platform they got to put that on the most amount of systems possible you know all the other activision games that are just sitting there rotting yeah you know those those might end up being xbox exclusives yeah which is going to be where we're seeing crash bandicoot spyro the dragon tony hawk icons of the playstation one era go xbox exclusive yeah, those have potential and yeah. th- i think that's worse for sony because yeah. if you have all of these multi-platform games mm-hmm. that are even if they they're not as close anywhere near as close as call of duty they're just adding to the library yeah and there's more if you just ha- just call of duty it you're not going to sell as much and it's it's just one name now yeah. you have all of these names mm-hmm. together that's going to make Microsoft look a lot bigger. And that yeah. might actually happen. Yeah. Uh, and and think about this. Um, Activision published a lot of Spider-Man games. So now Microsoft finally has a Spider-Man game to put on yeah. there. That's what on Game Pass to compete with Sony's much better <laughs> Spider-Man game. Anyway, so... Yeah, this is the one point I will I will side with, with, uh, yeah. with Sony on. That Starfield... Uh, probably would not have been uh exclusive and probably yeah. shouldn't be no no that should be and elder scrolls too like those both those games should be multi-platform i will say though that those bethesda games most people are buying those things on pc yeah people. but that you know that also leaves the, the question of like future bethesda games like because bethesda is making an indiana jones game what system That's is that gonna for be sure going to be an Xbox exclusive? When so? did they reveal that? Didn't they reveal it at a Microsoft showcase? No, they just re- released the trailer out of the blue. It was during E3 at some showcase, though. I don't think it was. I thought it was. I think they just... Uh... No, these are all... I, don't, I, I remember it was during a showcase because everybody went nuts i just remember seeing the trailer like did they just put out the trailer oh where's my damn perfect dark i want that yeah that's like been, that that's, that's been that's stuck in development that's another thing too microsoft bought like a thousand studios like they created yeah, stu- and they, they, they created a lot of other they created the coalition specifically to make the new perfect dark they put out an awesome looking trailer and it's stuck in development hell because yeah. the they had to recruit in Crystal Dynamics to help make the game. And the guy running it apparently sucks. Mm-hmm. And he used to work with Crystal Dynamics. So now that's why they're involved. Yeah. So, so they have a lot of games in development yeah. that are just not going anywhere. That's what it is. January 12, 2021, Bethesda posted on its Twitter account a teaser video featuring what seemed to be Indiana Jones uh, study featuring items, including a passport, a ticket to Rome, um, a map of Vatican City. And yeah, so it was just posted on Twitter January in 2021. The whole trailer, the yeah. trailer thing. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. John got the juice. Says Will's right. Will was right. Thank you. Uh, LJWVU says Microsoft puts all the first party games on GP slash GPU Game, Game Pass, Pass. Game uh, from thing. day one. I don't think any have been removed. The third party games are the ones that rotate in and out. Yes. Yeah, but. If they get Activision, they're all first party. Yeah. They're all all of a sudden first party. When they bought Bethesda, 
all Bethesda games became available on Game Pass. Yeah. So, yeah, that they're going to dominate uh, digitally, too. And that's yeah. something that PlayStation is arguing also. They're yeah. saying that Game Pass is, is dominating. But it's really not in, in, in comparison to the digital platforms. Well, And Sony is in a position where they could fight back harder if they made their service better. Right. Well, I think that in terms of like the Netflix of games, like that, yeah. that stupid idea, Game Pass is number one. Like that's like the, yes. the number one version. But of PlayStation that. wasn't that far behind when we looked at the numbers. No, but which I, is shocking because they just came out. Yeah, and people largely agree that it's not as good. Yeah, well, Game Pass is also like so far and ahead number one, and Sony is afraid that adding Call of Duty to that right. will just push them over the edge and create like this, you know, sort of monopoly over digital streaming games subscription game services the only reason game pass is better than playstation's thing right now Mm -hmm. it's not the library playstation actually has a fantastic library yeah i agree it's that you can play game pass on more things yeah it's it's ease of use it's you know better marketing better understanding of how it works it's just game pass it's not like a three-tier thing yeah (laughs) Yeah. you know like it's simpler it's, it's easier exactly. to use it was honestly that. simpler when it was playstation plus and playstation now when yeah. they were two separate things yeah just everybody hated playstation now yeah they should have called it something else yeah they should have just changed the name and said we're relaunching it as, yeah. as, as this playstation um, then <laughs> <laughs> lj because it's all retro stuff it's all like old stuff you don't put anything new on it's it, mostly old stuff. except stray if you don't like Netflix model for games, that's perfectly okay. It doesn't mean that it shouldn't exist. Other folks like like that. It's a lot like renting video games way back in the day. I don't mind the system at, at, at all. It, it would be helpful if there's an easier way to like pause your subscription. Yeah. You know? So like, if there's no game that you're interested in currently, you can just pause it. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why like I'm not subscribed to these type of things because like that's not how I, you know consume video games i like to get the game and then play it on my own time if it's on game pass or you know playstation plus and i don't get to it in time and it's just gone and i don't get to play it again. yeah but the first party stuff you don't have first to worry party about stuff, that yeah but like you know i'm i'm waiting to play hitman 3 that could disappear from game pass or yeah you know playstation plus at any moment yeah so I have Game Pass around because of the first party stuff, but also because of just how easy it is to drop in and drop out. Yeah. I've played Game Pass streaming more than I've played on the actual Xbox console, for yeah. sure. Um, I mean, at least la- this in the past couple months, anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. Uh, we got notifications, I think. Uh, Flawless Dino, thanks for the three months. Uh, all right. Suicide Squad delayed again. Oh, wow. boy. Warner Brothers has re- uh, reportedly delayed Suicide Squad, killed the Justice League. Yet again, Rocksteady's long-awaited spinoff slash sequel to the Batman Arkham series was most recently slated to launch on May 26th, but it's now coming later this year. Later this year. Um, it was allegedly delayed to fix bugs and improve aspects of the game that were lagging behind, although Bloomberg sources add that the changes won't overhaul many of the core gameplay that had led to the backlash it received at February's <laughs> PlayStation event. We're confirming that you will still be upset. <laughs> yes. Uh, fans' criticisms were directed mainly towards the game's online requirement and purchasable cosmetic items. The multiplayer shooter stars a group of villains tasked with stopping an out-of-control Justice League, which has fallen under the spell of the supervision a supervillain Brainiac. You can switch in the middle of the action between four playable characters, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and King Shark, Unlike Warner Brothers' most uh, most recent video uh, superhero game, the lackluster Gotham Knights, the upcoming title is set in the same universe as the Batman Arkham series, the last standard installment of which launched nearly eight years ago. Uh, the game will mark the one la- one of the last appearances of Kevin Conroy, the celebrated voice actor who died last year at 66. He will reprise as well as Batman, who appears but uh, not as a playable character in Suicide Squad. In addition to voicing the Dark Knight in Batman the Animated Series, uh, he returned in part... Uh, to Rocksteady's Arkham series, um, and he will make me cry when I hear his voice in this game. <laughs> uh, when it finally arrives, it'll arrive on PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, and PC. 
Um, they 100 surpri- delayed this game because of fan back. <laughs> I was just gonna ask about that. I was gonna say I'm surprised that they didn't do it because of the fan back. But but how those issues like the cosmetics and whatnot, and the fact that it's a it's a live service game. Yeah, that's so ingrained in the game. Yeah, how there's... how could you take that out? <sighs> yeah, I you mean, can, I'm you sure can, there you are can subdue it I'm a sure little there bit. Are maybe bugs and stuff that they that they're like legitimately into squash and stuff. But, you know, you don't say that your game's coming out on May 26th, have a big trailer for it, and then not release the game when you say you are. You know, th- there's definitely, because, like, bug fixes, you know, we live in an age where, like, you release the game buggy, and then, like, in a year, it's fine. Yeah. You know. And people buy it anyway. Yeah. Th- th- there's, it's definitely, they're going to try and, like, mitigate a lot of the problems people have with it. They can't fix everything. This is still going to be an online game. Maybe they can make it so that, like, if you're playing by yourself, you don't have to be connected to the internet. Maybe they'll take they, out... They need to do that. Maybe they'll least. remove some of the requirements to increase your numbers and stats and stuff because that's always a pain in the ass. I'd be surprised if this game comes out with the uh, requirement that you need to be online to play as one guy. Yeah. Because that's part of the backlash. That's part of the back. That's a big yeah. part of the backlash. And it seems like something that should be easy enough to fix. Yeah. But I think the fact that there's like 10 different menus for one thing you know that, that, that that's they can't that, yeah they, that'll yeah. be there that's just a bigger systemic problem in the games industry in general yeah it's, it's, I, you know i'm really hoping that uh this doesn't cause more problems yeah like it was gonna be a live service thing and because like i don't think live service games are inherently bad i think no. live service games are bad when you shoehorn into things that don't need them exactly you know? yeah and the problem is they're shoehorning them into games that don't need them yeah, but I'm saying, what if they now take some of the live service elements out, and it's the reverse of the Avengers game? Like the <laughs> Avengers game, they shoehorned in the live service stuff, and you could tell, and it's like all weird and stupid. Yeah. But now they're shoehorning them out, and well, maybe then, you're gonna see like gaping holes in the game. Yeah, now. that's the thing. Now, like, there's, there's just a lot of emptiness. Yeah, you know what could have been like a fun, cohesive, linear experience is now just like empty. Yeah. You know, but like maybe part, like a large part of the gameplay they were relying on was like your loadout and stuff. Yeah. And now they're going to take some of that shit out. And now you're just going to does that. that yeah. The game's going to be two hours. Yeah. So. uh, I have no faith in this game. I think this. Yeah, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Out. I'm very disappointed in this. The way this game has turned out. Not I'm, that like, you know, the Suicide Squad is like my favorite, you know, property or anything like that. But. You know, Rocksteady has proven that they know how to do DC superheroes in the past. You know, mm-hmm. one why not one more? And it just looks like they're making all the wrong decisions. Yeah, I'm a little interested in the story, but yeah, uh, but like in the same way, I was interested in the Injustice story. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, I'm not. I'm definitely not getting it. I'm, yeah, I'm not I'll, that interested. I still haven't gotten Gotham Knight. I will wait until both of those games are on Super Duper. I'm sale. sure I'll watch some YouTube videos on the uh, uh, cutscenes and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, what else do we have here? Uh, Capcom Showcase. I didn't see any of this. I caught this after the fact. Um, the big, the big one, the most important one, is the Resident Evil 4 demo was available that day. Yes. Did yes. you play it? I did oh it's only it was it's very very short it's only 15 minutes okay so here's my problem with this game oh no no th- this is a bit there's a big problem and i knew this was going to be a problem it's good and i like it <laughs> oh uh oh it's it's just like i knew i knew it wasn't going to be bad i knew it wasn't going to be like an absolute disaster mm-hmm. i just knew it wasn't going to be resident evil 4 it was yeah. going to be this like new modern interpretation of resident evil 4 and and i i'm pretty sure i've said this before it's like the, it's just close enough to the original where like i can feel at home with it but then they change like one or two things and it just like makes everything it just changes everything yeah, yeah. so like you know it's the be- remember the beginning of resident evil 4 when the two cops drive you up to the up to that house and you walk into the house and he, leon goes uh, excuse me sir I was wondering if you can if you've seen this girl in the photograph, and then he shoots the guy because he like he gets attacked. Mm-hmm. That's radically different. 
Uh, like you're walk, you're actually you lose. I remember a little bit of like the a cut scene in one of the trailers, and it looked like way darker and, and yeah, and it's a lot more. It's a lot more serious. Mm-hmm. Like you're wandering through the woods, you lose. Like you're not with the cops. Like you're trying to find them. You stumble upon the house, and like you try to talk to the guy in Spanish, but that doesn't work. You take him out in cut scene. Explore the rest of the house. Then he comes back and attacks you, and you have to take him out. Then, um, and then eventually you get to the village part where you meet the chainsaw guy, Doctor Salvador, and that's much more similar to the original, the way the original one played out. It even ends with the same "Where's everyone going?" Bingo. <laughs> so like they're trying, but like the, everything else is just so serious before that. Yeah. Like it, it kind of doesn't fit. Like there's another part like where like Leon's gonna like being swarmed and he looks out the window and he goes, Guess I'm making my own exit and then jumps out the window. <laughs> but again, like I did see the part where he jumps out the window. Yeah, like yeah. they're trying and like they're coming close, but I don't know, man. The original was just like a perfect well oiled machine mm-hmm. and like you're trying to like reinterpret it to a point that I don't think it needs. I've always said all you need to do to modernize Resident Evil Four is just update the control scheme to be more modern yeah that's all you really need to do and they're, they're just like okay whole game <laughs> <laughs> they want to put it in the new fancy engine that they have yeah i get that but like the original layout was like perfectly laid out yeah and the tone and the style was like perfect for it so, so. it uh also oh. i want one more thing weapon degradation has so always sucked will always suck i do not like that the knife degrades in this game didn't it degrade in the first no one? And the knife didn't take up an item slot in your attaché case. Uh, it was Resident Evil 2 where you break it if you use it. Yeah. It, like You get like two uses out of it and you break yeah. it every time you stab a zombie. Yeah. And the original, you just have it always. Yeah. Does it break No. when you're just using it? No, in the new one. It yeah. Did. Like, it, it degrades over time. Oh, that sucks. Because yeah. people used to do knife only wrong. Yeah. yeah. And now there's a, there's a stealth mechanic, which I'm like not 100% behind, but whatever. Like, you can sneak up behind people and just like knife them in the throat. And like that chips away at your knife's health. Uh, if you know how like in Resident Evil Four, like when you shoot a guy in the head and like he stumbles, you can roundhouse kick him. Yeah, they added a knife kill as well, and that degrades the way. Mm-hmm. Like so, everything you do with the knife degrade, even like attacking the barrels with it. Yeah, so I saw on Twitter there was some discourse about how the barrels that you can break have those like big yellow X's on them. Yeah, feel like this needs to stop in video games. Uh, yeah, that. That's another like thing too, because like in the original Resident Evil Four, like that wasn't necessary. All barrels were breakable. In the original Resident Evil Four, it was kind of obvious what was part of the environment and what wasn't. Yeah. But also in the original Resident Evil Four, big shiny objects. Yeah. Things flickered <laughs> shiny. You know, that, like it was very obvious what was. What that's you could still pick in up. this game when you when you drop a Gananos and like they they drop like pesetas or ammo and stuff. They're still like the big glowy thing. Okay, that's yeah. good. That that's still there. Yeah, like. Like it, it, it does the job very well. Mm-hmm. I just, I feel like I'm too close to the original to like accept this game for what it is. I, I, like, I understand. I'm gonna have to get it and play it. I basically. barely remember the original, so I, 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 I try. I to remember go... parts, and I'm sure when I play it, I'll, it'll all come back to me. I'm, but... I'm still mad about the dog. <laughs> I'm hoping something's up with. I'm hoping they change. I that. hope there's a new dog or like yeah. something like, because that's my favorite line of the game. Hey. It's that dog. Does that happen in the very beginning? Yeah. The dog? Yeah. Did, was it in the demo? Because I yeah. vaguely remember, I think it, I watched Jackson play it, and I yeah. saw the dead dog, but he kind of just walked yeah. over it and paid no attention yeah, to the, it. Yeah, the dog's in the demo, yeah. And I think Leon, if you like, you go up to a Leon, even says like, ah, because it's dead. That's fucked up. Yeah. I don't like that at all. Yeah, I might actually play this. It's been a while since I played a Resident Evil game. Yeah. Uh, also, I just found out I have Resident Evil, uh, so... Um, I got the PlayStation VR. Yeah, and I made the video on it. I'm uh-huh. saying there's no games, <laughs> and then I went to go throw out the box, and in the box was a code for six games. <laughs> <coughs> One of them was Village, I think. Oh, so now yeah. I just have Resident Evil Village. Oh yeah. So now I need to play Resident Evil Seven. Resident Evil Seven is very good. And then Resident Evil, 7 Resident is Evil Eight. Yeah. So I like Resident Evil. It's just been yeah, such a long fucking time. I've been trying it. to catch up. I played. Uh, I played Village. Not, no, I haven't played Village yet. I played Seven. I played Three Remake. Now I guess I'm playing Four, and then eventually I'll get to Village. I, uh, four is is a priority. I, I do want to yeah. play that. 
Anyway, what else do they have at this Capcom uh, spotlight? Exo Primal release date revealed. We got a new trailer for oh, that was release the release date for Exo Primal, which is coming to Xbox Series X and S. That Xbox was One. What, what should be Dino Crisis. Yes. PS5, PS4, and Steam on July, 20, uh, July 14th. Uh, we got a look at the tons of dinosaur hunting action as well as an introduction to some of the game's characters. The trailer also said the Exo Primal is an always online game uh, with a continuous internet connection required. Uh, there will also be an open beta test with cross-platform matchmaking from March 17th to the 19th. Uh, yeah, this should just be Dino Crisis. It actually looks, the first trailer I saw looked a little interesting. Yeah, I mean, like it does look interesting until you say like, you know, Always online, oh. <laughs> continuous internet connection. It looks like uh, Left for Dead, but with dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, which is fun, but yeah. I mean, hopefully this game does good so that they bring back Dino Crisis. True, and, like Dino Crisis rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, at least mm -hmm. the first one does. So, uh, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak is coming to PlayStation and Xbox this April. Uh, and now hunters can look forward to. Oh uh, yeah, it's uh, the Sunbreak expansion is. April 28th, Sunbreak, which was released on Switch and Steam last year, adds two new locations, a new hub world, and a ton of new master rank monsters and weapons. Capcom also announced a new Sunbreak digital event for April to share information about the next title update for Switch and Steam. Um, Ghost Trick is launching on June 30th this year. The original Ghost Trick was a DS title from uh, the creators of the Ace Attorney franchise. Um, the game stars uh, Cecil, a dead detective who can possess and trick real-world objects um, to save people from their own demise. The remaster features updated graphics, better frame rate, and new challenge features, plus 37 songs from the soundtrack have newly arranged versions from the composer of The Great Ace Attorney. I've heard this is a fantastic game. Yeah, this was in uh, the Nintendo Direct, yes. the last Nintendo Direct. It was also one of the guests of the games, mm. like, a few, like, a, like a month ago, maybe. Yeah, and I had no idea what it was. I lost. <laughs> I lost the the, yeah. the game. I've never heard of this game before in my life. And then it showed up in the Nintendo Direct, and now here it is. I just know because it's got the the cool guy with the sunglasses. <laughs> uh, is he the ghost? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Resident Evil Dead Island movie adds Jill Valentine. Capcom showed off a short teaser for Resident Evil Dead Island, the new movie coming later this year. That's a confusing name. I know because it has nothing to do with Dead Island. Sorry, it's Resident Evil Death Island. Oh, there you go. See, I was confused yes. because there's already a dead island. Yes, exactly. Resident Evil Death Island. Uh, it already included Leon and Chris, but the trailer uh, marked the announcement of Jill's inclusion. The movie is set to release sometime this summer. This is part of like the CGI movies that Capcom makes that are technically in canon with the games. And they're basically just cutscenes. There's two yeah. hour cutscenes. Yeah. I saw the first one like when it came out, Degeneration. It really is just a cutscene. It even ends with like a big explosion in a factor in an underground <laughs> la laboratory. Uh, Street Fighter Six introduces a new commentator. A, a new Street Fighter Six trailer revealed that the game's final color commentator, Japanese actor Hikaru Takahashi, Takahashi can commentate matches in Japanese and narrating the action in Street Fighter Six's battles. Her inclusion includes uh, her inclusion brings the total number of Street Fighter Six commentators to eight. There will also be subtitles for the commentators in 13 languages. Capcom also revealed that the Capcom Pro Tour 2023 season will feature Street Fighter 6. I didn't know that uh, it had commentators yeah, at think, all, really. I think this is a new thing they're adding to Street Fighter 6. It's going to have like color commentators and like play-by-play -play announcers. I think one of them is WWE wrestler Selena Vega. Okay. Um, I don't know who the others are. Street Fighter fighter six i think hikaru takahashi is a wrestler also oh no it's his actor yeah uh all the street fighter six commentators uh give me the list uh english is steve uh tasty steve scott jeremy vicious lopez james jen sensor shen and thea zelina vega trinidad so those are the english uh, actor english commentators in japanese it's aru uh kosuke here Hirawa no no uh hirawaya uh he demon kaka <laughs> okay. that's a good name and hikaru takahashi i'm interested in street fighter 6 uh i hope there's a demo i'd like to try it i think there's supposed to be a demo but i don't know when it's coming out. there was like a like a beta and there yeah. i think there's gonna be another one 
Okay. So I like to try that. That's out. cool. I'm interested in like the open world thing that they added to it. Yeah, and like the, the little that, campaign yeah. mode. And the fact that it's running in the Resident Evil engine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm a little interested in that. Uh Mega Man Battle Network, Bob's favorite. Uh we got a new trailer for Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, which is coming out April 14th. The collection will include 499 patch cards Holy that shit. were previously exclusive available in Japan as physical collectibles. Now all players will be able to use the cards in battle from uh, Battle Network 4 and onwards. The developer also introduced a Mega Buster mode, which amplifies your attack by 100 to allow players to get through battles faster. Will it make the game any better? Well, if you can get through it faster, I imagine so. <laughs> uh, so that's the kind of comp presents. Yeah. Interesting stuff in there. I think the biggest news was the first one, the Resident Evil 4 demo. Yeah. Because people were waiting for that because the game comes out at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, the other stuff is just... The other stuff is just like nice little, nice little uh, curios, as they call it. Uh, is Luke Real says, Ghost Trick is great. Also, Bob would hate it. Too much dialogue. Mm. Uh, thank you to Mr. Suspenser for the six months. Love consuming your content. Why is GBA locked to Wii U and it's not available to the 3DS where it would make the most sense? That was is that true? Yeah, you, uh, GBA games are available only on the Wii U, not on the I 3DS. never knew that. There, there's oh, all... I never knew that because I have GBA games on my 3DS. Yeah. I have I have Metroid Fusion and I have a, yeah. a Mario Kart. Yeah. There are all these conspiracy theories as to why GBA games are not available on the 3DS beyond the Ambassador program. The, the most prevalent one is something to do with the fact that Nintendo didn't realize that uh, GBA emulation was still on the 3DS hardware because it's based on DS hardware, which included uh, GBA emulation. So that's... Wait, wait. Nintendo didn't realize that it's not on the 3DS? Because it's not on the 3DS. <laughs> No, so <laughs> the, the 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 Game Boy hardware, the Game Boy Advance hardware is not on the 3DS. Well, the Game Boy Advance cartridge slot is not on the 3DS. Right. The hardware is not in there. That's a common that thing that everybody kept trying to tell me yeah. when I made my 3DS video. It is definitely not in the. Well, 3DS. because the conspiracy theory goes, because the DS can play GBA games, right? So there's gba code in the ds that there there is actual gba hardware in the right. ds right but there still has to be some sort of firmware to run that yeah no there is there is a piece of hardware in the right. ds that is a game boy advance the conspiracy theory goes because the 3ds hardware hmm. is based on ds hardware yes then by that token gba emulation should still be possible. Yes. Because that was on the original DS hardware. But they removed the Game Boy Advance right. part of it. And Game Boy Advance emulation is actually not great on the 3DS. <laughs> I With the hacked 3DS, yeah. uh, you got to finagle a little bit to get it to run really good. Right. Uh, one of the 3DS, one of the Game Boy Advance emulators that I first used on the 3DS ran like dog shit and i was shocked because yeah. i was like why there should be game boy advance and it turns out there is no game boy yeah. advance hardware in there so uh maybe that is maybe they couldn't figure out how to get it to run as good as they wanted but then why were there 10 why did they give you 10 games good point yeah maybe they could get those games to to be perfect yeah and then they couldn't figure out other games but i mean metroid fusion is a pretty uh power intensive game is yeah. it mario kart's probably pretty power intensive yeah. so that can't be it there's gotta be some weird other so who knows conspiracy maybe they wanted to try to start i mean you know when nintendo does this they try to make sure every single game is as polished as possible yeah maybe they started and then they gave up yeah and they were like nah people don't actually want this Whew. anyway um oh gamer lady thanks for the 100 bits looks uh uh have you seen Retroid is releasing another handheld, but in the clamshell form factor. Yes. You should go through my Twitter and pull new stories from my Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I did see I did see you tweet about that. Yes, because this is news here. Here we go. Breaking news here. Retroid, the guys who made the Pocket 3 Plus, yes. ha, are now making a clamshell. Here it is. 
The rumor is that this is going to be the exact same hardware that was in the Pocket 3 Plus, and it's just fucking clamshelled. Yeah. So don't get your hopes up too much. (laughs) I'm a little upset because this is just another one of these companies that's been releasing shit way too quickly. Yeah. Uh... I tweeted, I ordered a Retro Pocket 3 Plus the day the pre-orders launched and got it in my hands 87 days ago. Is that a long enough time for them to announce a new product? What do you think? No. <laughs> that's less than 100 days. Yeah. That's less than 90 days. That's, that's less, less than three months. Yeah. And then they just released a new product. Somebody mentioned that they have to, these manufacturers have to release a lot of new products because they're not like console manufacturers who make their money on the sales of the software, which mm. kind of makes a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, that does. But I still think they're abusing it. I still think they're abusing the system. Yeah, it's definitely... At least do a yearly release. Yeah. That is still way more than console manufacturers Or even like if you, if you have to do more consoles for sales like a bi-yearly like twice a year but like make them substantially different yeah like make one like the xl version or make one with analog sticks and the other one not you yeah know? like it has to be or folk this focuses on game boy games this focuses on like uh you know like playstation 2 games yeah. you know like yeah that makes sense. A powerful yeah. version, a less powerful, small version. Not, that that's fine. Not just, you know, oh, it's the same thing. Just uh it's got a new hat. Yeah. <laughs> I think yearly releases or make them incredibly substantially different. Yeah. The problem is that they can't even keep up with demand on the ones that they make. So mm-hmm. like they'll release one and then launch launch day isn't even a good barometer because yeah. you will you will have purchased it the exact second they go live and then you won't get it until weeks after launch day because they have problems uh, yeah. uh, keeping up with these things anyway we don't have any uh information on this thing it looks like a uh, gpd xd which was a yeah. console that came out like fucking six years ago um it looks like that uh there's no information yet. Just this little teaser video. It will have more information later this week, says uh, Retroid. Um, oh, wait, there's more. There, there, there's, oh. there's more colors. Oh, boy. You guys have given us over 155,000 views and over 1,000 followers. Thank you. Here's a special gift. It's color variants. Ooh. They look exactly the same as what we've had before, except watermelon, which is sick, <laughs> and sport red. Yeah. Which is like the switch red, I guess. Yeah. Uh, watermelon's kind of sick. Is that like translucent? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, there that's cool. The problem with these consoles, though, is that when you get a fun color, they yeah. take longer to ship them. Of course. So... I'm afraid to get the watermelon one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I also am upset with with uh, Retroid. Let's not forget that the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus that they made last year, uh, or no, just a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, the Retroid Pocket 3 that was late last year had manufacturing issues. So then they released the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus less than three months later. So I guess they're on a three-month cycle. Yeah. Anyway. Uh. Let's now talk about Stadia. Everybody loves talking about Stadia. When Google shut down underperforming game streaming service Stadia, the company announced the plan to keep the tech underlying it alive in the form of immersive stream for games, which it licensed out so other companies could let their uh, customers play games online. One high profile result was Resident Evil Village's demo you could play in a browser. But the same tech was behind AT&T, letting subscribers play Batman Arkham Knight and fitness bike maker Peloton launched a game called Lane Break. Turns out virtual cycling games are big business. In the midst of promoting a bundle of tools Google Cloud offers to game publishers to support their live service games, reporter Steven Dottillo mentioned that Stadia Tech is no longer available to license. We are not offering that streaming option, Jack. Uh, Jack Booser, director of game industry solutions at Google Cloud, told Totillo, um, because it was tied to Stadia itself. So unfortunately, when we decide to not move forward with Stadia, that sort of business-to-business offering could no longer be offered as well. 
Interesting. What Google's currently pushing to remind everyone it's committed to being part of the games industry now is a platform called Agon... What the fuck? Agones? Agones. Uh, Which was developed... Agons. Agons. uh, Which was uh, developed in conjunction with Ubisoft. Agones Agons uh, was showcased at Game Developer Conference in 2019 and combines game servers, engine integration, and a suite of mechanics and player monitoring tools. As well as Ubisoft, it's apparently being used by Jaeger, Niantic, Unity, and other companies looking to get into live service multiplayer games. Uh, Google developed it in conjunction with Ubisoft? Yes. Okay. You, that's interesting because Ubisoft has their own cloud service. Well, they have their own store. I don't think Uplay is like a... Oh, it's part of Luna. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jack Booser, uh, who was formerly the director of games at Stadia before taking his current position at Google Cloud, was quoted as saying it was at that moment when we basically had to make the decision about Stadia that we realized that Google Cloud, uh, we are at we are at our best when we are helping other people build this stuff, not necessarily building it ourselves. Even as games like Knockout City, Rumbleverse and Ubisoft's Hyperscape <laughs> have had to shut down at um, have to have, have had to shut down and most a couple of years after launching and Square Enix announced that Marvel's Avengers would no longer be supported uh, past September, publishers seem determined to blithely continue chasing the service game gravy train. Assassin's Creed Infinity will reportedly be turning the series into a live service oh game my God. God. that snaps multiple historical settings. Um, Blood Bowl 3 has seasonal updates and a battle pass, and Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League looks like it's going to be a looter shooter with gear scores and cosmetics that uh, earned via yes a battle pass so my, assassin's creed infinity is not the next assassin's creed game right it's another no, type of i game. don't okay. think so that's fine i don't mind them making a live service assassin's creed game if it's not a mainline game yeah do whatever you got to do hyperscape was such a missed opportunity because that game could have been a lot of fun and yeah. it just wasn't it didn't play very well um shadow bender says if you have youtube premium you can get three months of game pass for free Apparently. No. So you should try that. I should try that. Um, I'm sh- kind of a little surprised that Google couldn't sell off Stadia. I feel like other companies could have benefited from that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, I know. Even like Capcom. Yeah. They, they, they have, you know, they even said the, the, the demo with Resident Evil. Yeah. Like they have games in Square. They have games that run on the Switch. Like. Yeah, like it'd they, be beneficial for them to have a cloud it, streaming. They could have made it work. I mean, Sony should fucking buy it up. Well, I know Sony is using Microsoft Azure to run their cloud game. That would be really beneficial for Sony. Yeah, to if they ditch switch over that. to Stadia. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, yeah, it just and they said they were going to do one thing with it. Now they're just like it's the it's the classic Google graveyard. Drugs yeah. again. You know, we all saw this coming. What a waste. It really is. They could have used it for something. Yeah. At least make some money off of it. Yeah, but no. Maybe they do have a plan to use it for something else, but it doesn't sound like know. it. Uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage is the next mainline game. Right, 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 yes. right. Uh, okay, next news, which uh, is the last news. Starfield has a new release date, and we're going to get a Microsoft Direct for it. Oh, when? Um. Well, Bethesda has pushed the release date of Starfield back again with the highly anticipated sci-fi RPG now set to arrive on September 6th, and a Starfield-focused showcase will air June 11th. Starfield was initially due to release last November, but in May, Bethesda announced it was delaying the game's launch to the first half of 2023 to ensure that players receive the best, most polished version. Now, though, with rumors of a further delay continuing to swell, Bethesda has confirmed that Starfield will now arrive in the second half of 2023, 2023 on September 6th. Uh, Bethes- Starfield's uh, new release was announced with a short video presented by Bethesda's Todd Howard, who neglected to address or provide a reason for the delay, but instead thanked fans for their support and excitement about the game. Howard also noted that the developer has uh, the developer still has so much to show fans, with further details not set to be shared in a special Starfield Direct on June 11th, the Sunday before E3 week, Following Microsoft's newly confirmed Xbox Games Showcase. Uh, interesting. Uh, Microsoft also, I think, just confirmed that they're not going to be at E3, which we already yeah. knew. 
Yeah. I mean, we just kind of assumed they weren't going to be A3. Yeah. They said they were going to have announcements aligned with E3. So that's what it's, this sounds like they're doing what they usually do, which is like a showcase the Sunday before E3. Yeah. 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 So uh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But this is a Starfield Direct. I'm assuming Xbox will have its own special, its thing. Own special thing going yeah. on, uh, which is fine. Mm-hmm. That's interesting, though. They'll have a Starfield Direct. Well, maybe it'll be like they'll have their announcements the same day or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this game is coming out September 6th. I think <laughs> it is going to be delayed again. After uh, I think it's coming out September 6th. Uh, I don't think it will be polished. Oh, no, Bethesda think, games generally aren't, but like this game in particular is not going to be very polished. It will have an issue yeah. for sure, but I think that it will be pushed anyway. I yeah. think that once we get closer to September, September, it'll be something will happen. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. That's yep. that's, that's that's the it. that's all the news. We're done. We're done. Uh, I don't have a tweet of the week. I completely oh, forgot no. to get a tweet of the week. But you played the thing like two hours ago. I played ago. the thing and I didn't even realize that uh, I was cocking you guys. <laughs> I do have a thing to unbox though. Okay. So I guess we can do that. Do you want me to start that while you're... Yeah, here. All right. Uh, also, there is an embargo thing in here, which I think we're fine with, but you can read it. Here. Okay. Here you go. Ooh, it's shiny. It's shiny. I like the box. Yes. That's part of why I wanted to open it on the on the podcast. Okay. Hey, come on. Get out of here. Uh, oh, I can read oh, some notifications. I, 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 it's upside down. Uh, it's all shiny. All right, should I read this out loud? Uh, no, just okay. read the important bit, which is the uh, the date. Uh, review embargo lifts on 11 a.m. March 14th. It's March 14th. There you go. All right, we can do it. Let's see what we got. This is from Glorious. Glor- give me that paper so I can double check that we're not breaking any rules i know that but i want to read the rest okay this is from uh pc game uh glorious they make that keyboard they make this thing that i've been using glorious is a pc game peripheral uh company they make things for the pc gaming master race which we're not allowed to say anymore because it's racist (laughs) that yeah yes 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 i agree with that (laughs) master race is kind of fucked up it was it was a funny joke in the original zero punctuation video that people didn't see. The people joke. got too comfortable with yes. it is the problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the Model O2 was designed to be the successor of the award-winning Model O, the mm-hmm. first mouse we released back in 2019. The mouse has been upgraded with cutting-edge features and an improved shell design. It includes pixel-perfect tracking, zero-leg wireless, and Zero leg wireless and an extended battery life Ooh. that will empower you to perform at the highest level. What do I have? I don't know. This is. Did they send me another one? This is air. <laughs> this I is... think I have this already. The O2? Whatever I have, I've been using. So I've, <laughs> I've completely broken the embargo. <laughs> They didn't tell me about an embargo before. The wire, the wired model O2 is available in two colors, matte black and matte Are white. Are you using that with a retail price of sixty five dollars? No. The wireless is a hundred dollars. So, oh, I, I like this when they give you the wired option for the wireless mouse. Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's what it that's has. Good. But it, right but it there. has the dongle, right? Because the dongle plugs into that thing. It's a little square thing that you plug uh, into. It. This thing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the wireless one. Okay. What the hell have I been using? I'm pretty sure I asked about using the other yeah. one. You know what? I'm going to go in the other room. And just... go, all right, you go well, in the other room. see what I've been using. Okay. So, yeah. So, this gets plugged into here. This is all very exciting for you radio listeners out there. Radio listeners. I am 45 years old. So, uh, the wireless dongle actually gets plugged into here. I've been the... using that mouse been on stream and everything oh wow so, so then but then wait so do you get two dongles what's this i don't know what the hell that is because this was in this oh yeah no it's yeah that's like an adapter thing okay yeah oh i got you never mind okay it's cool it's got rgb uh it's got 2.4 gigahertz and bluetooth yeah 2.4 gigahertz a little faster yeah this mo- this mouse has been awesome so, yeah so uh i like having a white or gray mouse to match my aesthetic and i was right. like oh it's black i don't know if i'm gonna like it uh 
and it's been awesome. Nice. And it's it's you said it's incredibly light. Yeah. Um, I started using this, and I I have like a nice like uh, Logitech. Um, what do you call it? Uh, the 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 MX Master. Yeah. That mouse is sick. Yeah. It's great for that... editing. It is really heavy though. So when I'm okay. playing games, it's not so great. Yeah. So I've been using this, but this doesn't have all of the buttons and stuff right. that the MX Master has. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll switch back and forth. I started using this and I never went back to the other one. Oh, wow. Because a little bit because it's a pain in the ass to switch back yeah, and forth yeah. between mouse, uh, mices, Mises. <laughs> but uh, no, it's great. Uh, all right. It's good for playing games. Cool. And now I have And one. I've been editing with it, so. Uh, next up, what's next on the sheet? Or should I just pull something? I don't think there's anything else on the sheet. I think that's all just little, little doodads. Okay, so this is a... Uh, do you have your knife? Nope. All right, I think I got something. This is a glorious mouse bungee, the perfect mouse accessory for your pro gaming needs. Mouse bungee, a packed with extra weight and rubber feet for stability, Drags and drag is eliminated for fast response, and hold your different cable sizes with a rubber clip. Oh, it's available today on, on gloriousgaming.com. There you go. So this, I think I know what this is. It's black. It's really in there. Ugh, come on. There we go. Okay. It's got stickers and it is... It's this. I know what this is. I've seen these before. Like it, it's Oh, like it it's a cable. wired bunch. Oh, this is heavy. Yeah. Well, because they don't want you know the cable to move. Yeah, so uh, this that's one thing I don't like about wired mice uh, yeah. is it you get a little tug. Yeah. And that, that little bit of weight that's in one spot messes me up. So I always try to use wireless gaming mice. But people yeah. don't like wireless because you get less mm -hmm. lag on a wired mouse. Uh, so this makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. But this is like way over. But that's like a very specialized thing. Yeah. Like that's for people who like change out the weight in their mice and like, I might use this for a controller. That could be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And lastly, the final thing in here is um, a looks like a cable holder for the mouse cable. That's probably a mouse case. Yeah. It's probably for the whole mouse. Yeah, it's a mouse case. I don't know what this is. That is probably to put the mouse in there. Okay. Right. I don't know, man. I've, I'm a mouse console playing scrub, so... <laughs> Yeah, like that. Uh, okay. Wow, look at that. That's cool. cool. That's cool. I'll probably put uh drugs, some sort of portable emulator in there. <laughs> Thanks, Glorious. Yeah. I'm sorry if I. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I asked you if I could use this. Yeah. Because I've been using it. Uh, but thanks, man. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the 615 Warrior, thanks for the eight months. And the Killmatic, thanks for the four months. The tweet of the week drop recently violently woke my wife up from a nap during our road trip. She said it should be illegal. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I made it quieter. So it can't be that loud. Yeah. So really, it's your fault. Yeah, it's you. You're the problem. It can't ever be us. All right, now I guess uh, we'll talk to you guys real quick. Yes, starting with people who have comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Uh, where is it? You know what? Tweet of the week. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really a funny thing. This is just right. a news thing that I think was worth noting. Uh, oh. This is from Vito Comedy, who says, Today in complete wacko news, a sealed copy of Smash Brothers for the Switch just sold for 2000 five hundred dollars i and i saw your response to that it's like just go to the store yeah hey man just go to the store yeah because it's a 10 out of 10 it's a it's a it's a 10 it's a it's a what do you fucking call it wada rated 10 that's how you know that like this shit is out of control when a game from like five years ago mm -hmm. is going for two thousand dollars that you can just you literally i can get my ass up go to best buy right now and come home with it so how do you like is there a difference between the first printing of the game no so like i need to know exactly why this is two thousand five hundred dollars because they put it in a plastic case and they put a sticker with the word 10 on it because somebody had to launder money using 
this using the, and they didn't know what to use. Yeah. So they used exactly smash what it is. So God. And here is a sealed copy of Ocarina of Time 3D for sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars. That's no. I, I refuse this. I refuse this narrative. But if you try to take your sealed copy of uh Ocarina of Time 3D and get it water rated, it will never be a one hundred. No. I don't know why they did it one hundred instead. Yeah. It'll never happen. No, it'll come back with six. So. Yeah, something will be wrong. Anyway, uh, now I am opening the Discord. Okay. Uh, first up is Denny Lewis. I've never seen that 8-bit do controller, and now I need it. The Chinese one? Yeah. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a limited edition, right? Yeah. Do they even make it anymore? Or? I don't even know how you get it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I mean, check their check Ape and Do's website because I know they have like exclusive colors over there, but I don't know if that's one of them. Year of the Rabbit Limited Edition. Yeah, yeah I have no idea how to, how, to, how to get that. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rock PR, if the Nintendo Switch lets people play old games on the new system, they will be more likely to buy it. People can still play their favorite games without needing an old console. Also, more people might want to try the new system if they know they can play old games too. Nintendo should keep doing this with all their new game systems to make sure people keep choosing them over other companies. I mean, yeah. Nintendo's going to need to get their library up quick because all these other portable emulation devices are going to start to become mainstream. Yeah. People are going to realize you can just go on Amazon and buy a little Chinese thing for $50 Mm -hmm. and play all of your retro games. They will run like shit on the cheap, Chinese ones. Yeah. But uh, you'll still be able to have your Pokemon in your pocket, and you can't right now. I mean, I think the fact that Logitech just made a portable gaming device yeah. that is available in big box stores is yeah. like the first step towards like Amber Neck or like Razor. Razor or like. Because comp- Razor did. They did a piss poor job, but they did. Yeah. But like <laughs> companies like that, like coming in and, you know, starting to make portable emulation systems Mm -hmm. like more mainstream i think so yeah uh melon says heard a new switch 2 rumor it'll have cup holders okay but like basic cup holders like the kinds that can fit your big gulp from 7-eleven yeah because like you know american cup holders or european yeah or japanese cup holders it's very different it's very important well i know european cup holders it's usually just one and it's like that big yeah so like I think Japanese cup holders are like normal size. American cup holders. Now those are cup holders. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, talking about. That's what we need. Or is it gonna be region specific? Yeah. If you live in Europe, you're gonna get boned with the cup holders. Ty Zilla says, How many times do we have to hear speculation about the supposed new switch? You will never hear the end of it. Yeah. Uh how you have been talking about this for three years and it doesn't mean anything anymore. How about you talk about it when Nintendo announces the system? Enough dead a- end speculation fairy tales. Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> you're talking to the man with articles written about him. <laughs> predicting That's that right. Nintendo would make a hybrid console. Yeah. Ladies so, and gentlemen, I'm going to be yourself. throwing out speculation until I'm in the ground. Yeah. Or until <laughs> comicbook.com gets my name right. <laughs> Trevor Grover says, DBZ is such a boomer franchise. Oh! <laughs> burn, 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 burn. He's not wrong. He's not He's wrong. Not wrong. What's the kit? What is it? Naruto is for is for Naru- Zoomers. What what's for I, Zoomers? I, I thought Naruto Avatar? was. I thought Naruto was for millennials. No, Avatar. I don't know. Avatar. Does Avatar what's count? the Zoomer anime? Zoomers in the chat. Let us know. What are you yeah. people watching? I know it's not a Roni Kenshin. Yeah, don't say like. It's got to be one that has like a billion episodes. Yeah, it could be my hero. Could be my hero. It could also be One Piece because that's got more episodes than. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I saw a really Jujutsu funny. Kaisen. That's too new. Uh, Demon there... Slayer, Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer. Yeah, Demon Slayers for Zoomers. McFarlane Toys just put out a line of Demon Slayer toys, and they're they're actually look really nice. Well, every anime toy looks amazing. I know. 
Uh, Pliskin says Fist of the North Star, who is just, sh- that's impossible. Yeah. Right? That's that, like that, from that, the fucking 60s. That is a fucking boomer franchise. Yeah. There was a really funny picture I saw. It was like, um, it was like the demon, the, the demon souls guy, like looking up at a castle and it's like one piece, however many thousand episodes. And then it was like a big demon monster thing at the castle. And it said Sesame street, 10,000 <laughs> episodes. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now we're in the chat. Yes. And we're just going to talk about anime. Evangelion is gen is gen X then. Well, yeah, I, there's 26 episodes of that. I got to 20 and I just stopped watching. I, and I, 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 I feel bad about it. I keep saying I'm going to watch it. I keep threatening to watch it. And I never watch it. I, 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 I get to this point in animes where I know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, they all do that. They get you in a comfortable spot and then they fuck the whole world up around yeah. like towards the end. Mm-hmm. And I know what's going to happen. So I just kind of stop. Yeah. I can like see it coming and I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, I did see that movie Bullet Train. That is just an anime. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, highly recommend I'm that. a little interested in that. Yeah. I didn't know John Wick Chapter 4 came out. It's not out. I think it's like coming out like later this month. Oh. I think it's like in there's pre- reviews. Yeah. It's like, I think it debuted at south by southwest or whatever okay. film festival is going on right now bob you will never predict what will happen in evangelion's last two episodes okay <laughs> uh i know it gets crazy that's why i want to finish it yeah didn't bob just watch stop watching spy family after the fourth episode i that's another thing that gets me with animes they will come up with a conflict yeah and in like American shows and stuff, they come up with the conflict and they just get roadblocked. They get closer and then roadblocked and then closer and then roadblocked yeah. and then closer and roadblocked. But in anime, they come up with a conflict, solve the conflict in two episodes. Yeah. And then it's over. <laughs> and then the next episode, they come up with a new conflict. Yeah. So it gives you an out. So I got the out in Spy Family. The whole thing yeah. is get her. You need to get with, you need to create a fake family to get this girl into the academy right so you get the girl into the academy in the fourth episode <laughs> and then and now what now what yeah now, and then and then the next episode after that was this weird bizarre one-off story mm-hmm. where they made a fun little like activity for the girl yeah and then on the fifth episode i was like i'm fucking done i don't I, yeah. what i have no reason to watch another episode of this because i they they concluded the story yeah the journey, Bob. The journey. I need a. I need a destination. Things have to happen along. I need the to journey. know what the destination yeah. to be. There's another anime that was a Netflix exclusive anime. Uh, it was it was based in L.A. Okay. I don't even remember the name of it anymore. Um, but halfway through the season, they did that. They concluded. The, they had a big epic story, and they concluded it halfway through the season. And then the next episode was the start of a new arc, and right. I was like. I'm I was I'm comfortable with the way that it ended. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy with the ending you just gave me. So, Great Pretender, yes, I think that's what it was. Mm-hmm. It was good uh, for the six episodes I watched, and then it felt like it was over, so I just stopped watching it. They did the same thing in freaking uh, Death Note, one of the best animes of all time. They ended it like six episodes early, mm-hmm. and then everybody says just stop watching because the, the rest <laughs> of it is not that yeah. not that good. You know what was crazy? The Simpsons Death Note. I want to watch that. That was crazy. I've seen nuts. clips of that and it looks fucking yeah. crazy. Death Note is incredible. Where is your sweater from? I think Abercrombie. Mom got it. Yeah. Mom got yeah. it. It was a Christmas, was a Christmas mom gift. Yeah. Um, they need to bring the Adventures of Batman and Robin for any for SNES to Nintendo Switch Online. Played it through emulation and it's amazing. That's something you'll you'll never see. Yeah. Uh just keep it on your emulator. <laughs> That's a Warner Brothers issue, right? Yeah. Oh that was at a time when like games on Genesis and SNES were radically different. So I think Konami made the SNES version, oh, but you'll... Sega made the Genesis version. You'll never see that yeah. then. Because that's too much tied up. I mean, Disney did it with their games and Capcom. I mean, Capcom owns the Ninja Turtles. Those made those all those Ninja Turtles games. But like, Disney did it with their games. They got like the Virgin Interactive games, the Capcom games, all in one collection. Mm-hmm. So, 
I mean, Virgin and Capcom seem easy to work with. Konami seems impossible. Yeah. Uh, Otaku Sam says, follow up from last week. I got my N64 in the mail today and it came with everything I needed. It's also able to play both Japanese and U.S. cards. Oh. I got Harvest Moon 64 looking to get Dobutsu no Mori. Uh, what other games do you suggest? Did you, where'd you get it? Yeah. We need more deets. Yeah. Where'd you get it with all that yeah. fancy stuff? And like, when you say like you can play both Japanese and American games, does that mean the whole dust cover was removed or did they just remove the little pins inside that prevents Japanese games? I'd imagine the pins. Yeah. Uh, play Mario 64, idiot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Star Fox 64, GoldenEye, and Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark is a must play. Yeah. Can you guys imagine Bob watching Cl- Clanad? That's a that's some weeb shit, right? Oh, it sounds like it is. Um, yeah. Oh, I heard this is like fucked up. It looks like a like a like a waifu uh, thing, yeah. but it's like it's supposedly like super fucked up. Yeah. Uh, is Bad Fur Day good? Yes, it is. Bad Fur Day is Congress Bad Fur Day is very good i'm not sure i think uh, i think we liked it because it was naughty and i feel like if we played it now it wouldn't be as as good no i think i think it i got i mean i gotta play it again i i see if it holds up but i'm pretty sure it does i did finally because it was only eight bucks i did get rare replay digitally which means i did play golden eye on an xbox and i can confirm it's better than xbox. oh just the controls the controls save that's what i mean about like you know update resident evil 4 with a more modern control scheme that's all it takes they updated Goldeneye with a more modern control scheme, and it's so much better. Mm. Um, Sukasa says, Spy Family, the goal is to assassinate Hitler, whose son is in the same class as Anya, which there is the girl. Go. Yeah. Uh, is that true? Because that sounds fucking awesome, yeah. and I did not get there yet. <laughs> That'll give me reason to keep watching. Did you know there's an Animorphs book where they go back in time, and there's a chapter where they debate they ha- they're like about to kill Hitler, and there's a ch- there's a whole chapter about whether or not they should. <laughs> the fuck. It, 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 this is in a children's book about teenagers who could turn into animals. To be fair, what if something worse happens? Exactly. Yeah. Um. Like the like like Hitler's right hand man actually is worse than Hitler, yeah. and he gets in power. They wind up killing Hitler. Spoiler alert. Oh, they do. Yeah. Was there any butterfly effect? I, I didn't get that far. It's like 50-something books in that series. Mm-hmm. Uh, play win back. Yes, play win yes, back. Yes, win back. Uh, Edward Bova, what do you think about Doug Bowser saying Tears of the Kingdom $70 price reflects its full, deeply immersive experience? Yeah, I mean, we know that that's a big game. Yeah. So, if anything deserves a little more money, I don't know if it necessarily is because of that or because they need to, they're, they're trying to like recoup development costs, or if this is like just really a grand experiment mm-hmm. because they know people are going to buy Tears of the Kingdom. Maybe they want to see like if people will are willing to buy games at $70 as opposed to oh, they will what be. they usually spend money It will on. sell. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, someone said, oh, M. Skelton says, can you control the Apple podcast app audio? The YouTube video and the stream are fine, but it's kind of quiet on the app. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Cause it's when I do the, when I do the audio editing, I don't change the volume of it. It's the same audio from the video stream. Yeah. It's so, very weird. Yeah. What would, what would the, what do you use to do it? Did you use all that? Uh, not all that audition yeah it shouldn't change anything. yeah I, I literally convert the file to you know mp3 and that's it very strange yeah. um apple is good for me how i usually listen okay there you go we'll take it all right that's it thanks for hanging out thank everybody. you for tuning in thank you for watching thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf Den podcast is is all right. As always, all Wolf right. Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. Can't make the show for any reason at all. Like, you're afraid I'm just going to have a stroke in the middle of the hour. You might. We always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube.com slash Wolf Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there 
on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us because you don't want to see me have a stroke we always <laughs> put up as an audio version over on anchor.fm slash wolf them podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice apparently anchor.fm is now just spotify for podcasts oh did spotify buy it well spotify has always owned it but they're rebranding it oh so okay. i got i gotta change this outro there we are available on all major podcasting platforms including spotify apple podcasts google play and whatnot uh, but no matter where you get this show from, folks, please, sh- please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday, probably. Uh, go watch Jess Adele. She's streaming uh, Kirby. So go over there and say hello. Yeah. And we will see you later. Goodbye. Bye. I forgot what button this is. Nope. <laughs> oh, that's the intro. Ah, we'll start over ah! again. There we go. Now we're gone. Goodbye.